<laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. It is 8 a.m. Central Time. We are going live from God's Country, Nebraska. Welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number 226, season four. We're quickly approaching season five, which is going to happen in mid May. And that's the point where AWAG is going to age another five years. But uh, before we get started here, uh, we're going to go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves. Today, we're talking about this is a topic we've never really discussed before. I've done some videos on a range that I shot at. Uh, before I moved to my current location, I love shooting out there. Uh, you know, joining a joining a, a firing range, a shooting range, a gun club, a pistol range, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what are some of the some of the pros and cons? What should you look for? Are the ranges you should stay away from? You know, for a lot of you, you don't have a choice. There's one, and that's the one that everybody has to go shoot at. You don't have an option, or maybe you don't have any private land to shoot on. So everybody's situations are going to be different. So we'll we'll give you a little bit of advice, kind of what we've been through, the scenarios we've run through, and it doesn't seem like a big deal. But when you're dropping a couple hundred bucks a year. You know, and you want to make sure that uh, you're going to be able to have as much access and po as possible and enjoy all the features that they have to offer. So uh, before we do that, let's go and let the panel introduce themselves. We're going to fire it up. He's wide and awake. He's ready to go. Squib load. How's it going, man? You with us today? You ready to go? Yeah, I'm kind of 1.25 cups of coffee in. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Here, let me help. All right, man. So Squib load's got a wonderful channel. Check it out. I want everybody to go over there and subscribe. Lots of good stuff, lots of good coffee reviews, lots of good, you know, mixed drink videos. You show up how to make those things and you talk about gear. You offer a little bit of everything. Squib, you've got the uh, the Swiss Army knife of YouTube channels. You realize that, right? The premise behind the channel is that gun people are regular people like everybody else. It's not all guns. I'm not saying it's bad if your channel is all guns, but I decided that I wanted to show that we have other interests. We have other hobbies. We have families. We have jobs. We have, we, you know, people always just kind of like, stigmatize us as just you know uh we just sit around watching fox news all day and then we go to the range and then we just you know go to the bait shop and go home and that's pretty much it you know yeah and our culture doesn't help either because that's what people will say when they're on yeah. live streams too so yeah i i wanted to show that there's more to us than just guns we're, we're your neighbors we're your your relatives we're your co-workers we're your fellow citizens and you know, if if you're not into guns or you don't believe in the Second Amendment or you don't understand, we're a resource if one day you start asking questions. I'm not into converting people. Uh, I'm into just uh, being a good ambassador. And if you ever want to know, I'm I'm here for you. And and then, you know, I let my friends on YouTube uh, kind of uh, influence me. So stuff like the speaking squibbish that was... Uh, that was Sandhill's idea, and I've kind of ran with it, and I've had fun doing it. Actually, that's just it. For the most part, I don't do the videos for for anybody other than me. I have fun with it. I do audience requests from time to time, and you know, my, my videos are geared in different ways. Like the black powder videos I do are for new people that are new to black powder. So I'll get somebody new, say, thanks, this is what I needed. And then I'll yeah. get somebody experienced going, you're an idiot. You know, and it's like- Yeah, I get that too a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and Being this is for videos. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my channel really isn't for everybody. And I've taken some of the things on my channel uh, off and put them on other channels too, and just made those specifically about this or more about that or or whatnot. And and just I'm having fun. Uh, so that, that's really what it is. Uh, my videos aren't for everybody. My my opinions aren't for everybody. They're not meant to be. Uh, I'm not there to change your minds. And uh, just having fun. I got to get this comment out real quick. Tommy Gunn, the comment of the morning here. Going to the range can prove humbling that someone can shoot better than yourself. So <laughs> this is true. This is true. So no, no right, matter how good of a shooter you are, there's someone. There's there always better. somebody better. There's always another Jerry Mitchell like in the next stall over. So, yep and, yep. and you know what? I don't oh. really like to do range videos. I've had lots of people ask me to do range videos. I've done a few. I don't like to do one. one. It's just it's a pain in the butt for me. <laughs> And what I've decided to do is just start linking other people's range videos for whatever it is I'm talking about. At the end of if if, if I if I'm subscribed to your channel or I know you personally or I think you do good range videos, I'm just going to link your video at the end of mine. So I'll review the 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 gun. There you go. Or, there you go. or maybe I'll I'll do some other stuff with it. But mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying I'll never take something out to the range or never drag the camera and all that gear out there. But I'm just. Don't tune in my channel for range videos. Uh, just let Travis do the work. I, I did a video one time on how to film a gun video. <laughs> and I had a table just full of stuff. It's like all this is necessary to make the three and a half minute range, range video you're about to watch. And there's yeah. cameras. You got the, the gear box. You got the, you know, the whatever. Everything you need. It's just unreal what it takes. So uh, defense, now, what are you talking about? That's why Travis doesn't go to the range with me anymore. 
What? Yeah, because you don't like being shown up. Because of, of who? Oh. Because you don't like being shown up. Oh, my God. Are we one and one right now? Are we tied right now? Are we? In fact, I think I'm probably one. I'm only like one and two with you in shootouts. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh. guys, check out, check out Squib's channel. Lots of good stuff. So. All right, let's go ahead and move on over to Foose because he just gave us his little morning stretch yawn yoga thing right now. Are you you got no, your Pilates ball out? Are you sitting there doing your, no, your breathing no, exercises no, I, and you know? Huh? I was just thinking, you know, if if I went to the range with you and Defense Dad, you'd both be uh, in second, third place. We'd both be humbled, but, humbled. Yeah, you know what? Um, why don't we just why don't we just see what happens on June fourth, and then we'll start getting some <laughs> wagers. We should get some wagers going, like who's going to be the top shooter from. Out of the uh, balding early forties, you know, fat white guys club, who's going to be the who's going to be the best shooter? So, well, I'm not yep. balding. I'll have you'll be there soon. Managed, you'll be there so soon. it'll be really a burden. No, me really. neither, but yeah, I, I, I'm turning gray. <laughs> but who's um, the greatest? Who's the greatest fud of them all? Yeah, <laughs> the fuddies. Yeah. We should have the fuddies awards. For, <laughs> the fuddies. The, the fuddies. Awards. The fuddies. <laughs> best shooter, worst shooter. You know, and that's like actually a compliment. Um, the biggest sweet. fud. <laughs> best beard goes to single shot. Look at that. Honorable honorable mention goes to uh it actually be a tough one between defense dad and single shot. So I don't know. You guys got some oh, catching up at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I know. I think I'm really tempted to just go ahead and let it go. I, my colleagues, some of the males in the apartment are starting to, to grow out their beards, and I'm really feeling that it's time to just go ahead and go full rescue. And we don't have face covers anymore at my job, so therefore I have no excuse to not have a beard. And I've already shaved today, so I think I will stop today and just let it go. So it's about that time. Um, yeah, I mean, like getting into the black powder, like Squib said, like I need to learn how to paper patch some rounds for my uh, um, my Swiss rifle that I just bought that I have. Still have bring your black powder gear with you. We can have a little uh, training no, session. No, it's, it's going to be smokeless, and... but it's still yeah. paper patch stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. It, it, that, um, it's a Schmidt Rubin I bought. Cool. 1889. Good fun one. All right. Um, also joining us, we got AWAG 1000. AWAG, what's going on? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How, uh, thanks for having me on, and how's it going? Yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. So you excited for today's topic now that you've moved to uh, more of a land of freedom? Are you are you enjoying talking about ranges? And Do you even belong to a range? Yeah, you belonged to a range back in New Jersey back in the day. Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I, was, I was part of a uh, actually a really, really nice range, and I really wish that I could uh, find some capital and some land in order to basically copy and paste that exact range down here. Yeah. That's kind of a dream of all of us, but man, with land prices anymore, especially in Nebraska, we're pushing 10, yeah. 15,000 an acre. It's like, Oof. oh my God. And then plus you got, you know, there's just a lot that well, goes into starting one up. There's that's so actually, much that goes that's, into it. But, that's yeah. actually not that bad. Well, well that, that and, an and there, that's, that's, that's acreage where you could farm on. That's, yeah, no, you want a house plot, you're going to pay 50 grand. It depends on where you are in the state. 50 to probably. Well, uh, well, well no, no, I mean, I'm mean saying that, you know, it, it's hard to find like, like land for a range. Yeah. If you want to build it, you almost have to have an uninhabitable land where the land isn't useful for anything else. Um, just because if it's could be used for cattle, grazing or, or crops, anything, yeah, yeah, pasture. it's going to be stupid expensive. Yeah, you know, especially on our state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so real quick, um, AWAG, back to your channel. What do you have to offer viewers that come to your channel? What are they going to find if they go over there? You're kind of our our long range shooter guru here, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, my channel has a bunch of other stuff. I'm still trying to improve my, uh, camera work, but some things I'm just like, Oh, I just got this cool thing. I'm going to show this off and then just off the cuff kind of, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I post a couple of uh, videos here and there. Some of them good, some of them not so good, but, um, Hopefully soon I can have more shooting videos up. It just cool. seems like every time I go to the range, I always want to shoot and I completely forget to record. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before too, where I get into an entire shot and I realize I didn't turn the, the target cam on. I was like, oh, because I'll turn it off and stop and do something and then forget to turn it back on thinking it's still on. So, oh. So it goes the life of the gun tuber. But uh, anyway, guys, head over to AWAG 1000's channel. Get over there. Subscribe to uh, lots of good content. And uh, let's move right along to my, my neighbor, uh, Defense Dad. Defense out. How's it going, man? You good? I'm awake on a Saturday morning early enough for the show for once. That's good. That's good. We missed you last week because we went bright and early last week and had a little chat about 357 SIG and 
Yep. Well, in case you didn't know this about me, but I'm not a morning person. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. There I don't have go. to work, be to work till 10 a.m. Most, most days, so I don't get out of bed till like 8. Oh, yeah. That's all right, man. But you're with us now, and that's what's important. You guys, get over to Advanced Dad's channel. I want you guys to like and subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of great... Uh, a lot of great information there for you to check out. Lots of cool reviews and definitely, you know, a lot of good budget-minded stuff. And then also some nice higher-end gear, too. So we got a good balance of content on these channels. Lots of free entertainment for you guys. I mean, that's the cool thing about it. So, all right. And single shot, last but not least, single shot. What? You're on the road already driving. It's too early, man. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm headed to Georgia there for Monday. And uh, I got... Uh, Got a little ways to go yet. Nice day today out here in this area. It's kind of a little bit cloudy and maybe uh, around 37 degrees, I guess. And, so, uh, single, I you're, you're not you're not self-employed. You work for another company, correct? No, yeah. Yeah, I'm not an owner-operator anymore. I get out of that racket. Well, you're an operator, bro. <laughs> well, no, no. no I, I, I was just going to ask him how fuel prices are affecting him and stuff like that it's gonna it's gonna hurt everybody and oh yeah the last time that this happened guys and fuel was five dollars or more a gallon i had to get out of it you know when you pull up to the fuel pumps you get two 150 gallon tanks Jesus. and you pump them things full <clears throat> and it comes to over fifteen hundred dollars it's time to uh cut ties and that's just exactly what i did it the thing is, right now, the way things stand, if things keep going up, there's going to be a lot of the smaller companies and more of the owner-operators going out of business. You know, they're killing us. They really are. And the, the sad lead. part about it is, like I mentioned before, every time that there's a major or a minor uh, cost and increase on anything for this transportation outfit, you know, for this transportation industry, it's going to hurt everybody on the bottom line. Because mm -hmm. y'all are going to pay for it. And I hate to say yeah. that, but, you know, we can't keep voting in these people that insist on doing crazy stuff like they're doing right now. Can't do it, not survive. So, anyway, with the uh, Rumble channel and uh, the uh, YouTube channel, I've been kind of lax here a couple, couple, three times. I did have a couple of uh, interesting uh, incidents happen up there to the house there a couple of days ago. Uh, I've had a lot of deer all back house anyway. I see them most all the time. But uh, I had a black fox cross my back lot. I've never seen one until then. Hmm. So uh, that happened. And the, day, the next day, <laughs> I had uh, a deer come out. She was being chased. She weren't on a full run, but she was trotting pretty good. And a few minutes later, I see what was chasing her, and uh, I'm going to have to make it a, uh, a thing when I <clears throat> when I get home. I'm going to have to take and have a rifle handy. Cause I had a coyote out there chasing them deer, and I mm. will not tolerate that. Gotcha. Well, if there are, do you, do you live in a neighborhood, just a normal neighborhood like anybody else, or are you kind of in a rural area? Or are you surrounded by woods? Because, you know... I, uh, we don't, where I live here, we'll get creatures coming to town here in Nebraska, turkeys, but I've never actually seen coyotes like in town. I know it's happened in some places, but some of these towns like Omaha and Lincoln are weird how they build out and they kind of circle around land and open land and wooded areas. And so sometimes yep. you'll get some things like that in town, you know, but, uh, oh, that's crazy, man. We get that here oh. in the middle of Kansas City. We get yeah. But but see, Missouri's just all it's just all trees. It's just nothing but trees in Missouri with a couple hollow spots for towns. That's what Missouri is. That's that's my take oh, yeah. on Missouri. So it's just a big forest with like you know it's like Endor with like you know Kansas City in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, beautiful though, beautiful state. So right, guys, check out Single Shots channel. It's Single Space Shot with an exclamation point. And uh, Daywolf is your Rumble channel. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, let's give a little uh, shout out. We'll just check some comments over on the YouTube side real quick, and then we'll just talk ranges for a little bit. Well, I'm actually going to be thinking about this one, guys. What are some of the features that you like about the range, what your range has to offer? And those of you that are watching this, there's going to be, with, with new constitutional carry happening in a lot of states, there's a lot of people that are going to become new gun owners. We've seen new gun ownership skyrocket in the last two to three years. 
And uh, there might be a lot of people that, that haven't joined a range or they've only gone once or kind of on the fence about it. There's a lot of benefits to belonging uh, to a range. And it's not just about us taking our cameras and making YouTube videos and stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of therapeutic uh, benefits of going to the range too. So anyway, uh, let's go give a little shout out on the YouTube side. We've got tacos and French fries, gunmetal guy, USA is in the house. Weston Probst is out there. YNH is with us. New York Outcast. Uh, Tactical Foot is watching today. Squib lives out there and Squib loads over here. Squib, I think that's your doppelganger. Uh, Scott 79, Mike's in the house. Tommy Gunn's joining us from up north in Canada. Gunpowder Beauty 2 Live, Moo 2 Live, Moo. Ozzy Orsborn's out there. Uh, M. Gabriel was uh, was out there also. Posted one of the first uh, little comments this morning. So um, you had a you had a joke, M. Gabriel. Is that right? You said something like Biden has been hospitalized with intense gastrointestinal disorder. He can't stop Putin or something. Is that what you said? I don't know, something like that. Uh, Gunpowder Beauty's watching. Mike's out there. Uh, Patrick Pew Pew's watching today. Defense Dad. Sandhills Media is in the house. Sandhills Media, biggest FUD goes to Quaver. Come on, man. He's the tactical FUD. He's the original tactical FUD. Uh, William Traders out there also. What's that? Gunpowder Beauty. Didn't she just have a baby like two days ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, 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 I said they should Dedicated. nickname the baby Ti Tiny Tank is what they should. I think they nicknamed the baby Moose because he weighed as much as me when he was born. He weighs like, he was like 15 pounds or something. He's like, as soon as he, you know, as soon as they got him cleaned up and stuff, he's like, hey, mom, I need a bottle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that's how yeah, the kids like, they were Sasquatch, they were on a man. show the same day. They should have. They, they should get. They should get Yeti, Jeez. like a Yeti onesie for that baby, man. Is he big? Uh, well, her her term it. was like was like thirteen months, wasn't it? it? Was insane, man. He thought she was like, man. I'll tell you what, she was she was pregnant forever. <laughs> she gave At least birth that's to what she said elephant. it felt like. So what's that? She gave birth to an elephant. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tiny tank, tank, man. I'm telling you, tiny tank. You should, name, you should name the kid Abrams. That'd have been an awesome first name. Right <laughs> that Abrams be... Scout. Dot. There you go. Because <laughs> Tardot's last name, right? Because Tardot's the daddy's name. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Razor JB's joining us. Mike's out there. Fluffy 10 millimeter, millimeter Jeep guys in the house. Uh, West Weston Probes is out there too. Lots of good people joining. And tacos and French fries. If I didn't already say so. Uh, yeah, so to address a couple comments, uh, William Trader's out there. Let's talk about this real quick. We are going to have a range day. The idea is if you are a gun tuber, if you're a YouTuber, and uh, you want to come join in with us that are kind of in the same community, there's a lot of us that live kind of in the central part of the U.S. and the southeast, uh, we're doing a one-day range day on June 4th from 9 to 5, and it's at a really cool range, Nebraska Shooters, right, Defense Dad? Is that Nebraska yep. Shooters? Okay. Yep. And... Um, it's not going to be, we were going to have some classes you could take and stuff like that, but it's just going to be come out, fun shoot, maybe have some little competitions against each other. They've got dueling trees out there, steel targets. You can shoot ARs or you can obviously have rifle range. They've got pistol range. And uh, it's going to be just a kind of a fun time, nine to five. Then after that, maybe we'll do some dinner and then go have a field trip over to Shields and go stock up on ammo and reloading supplies before we all go home. So um, yeah, defense that anything you want to say about that? We were hoping to have everybody RSVP by, by, by the, end, uh, well, the end of March. Is, yeah. Because we we, we we I can't talk this morning. Sorry, Gotta no, have enough right. people to make sure it's worth keeping the range, which I think as of right now we do. But and then email you can email me or Travis. <clears throat> My email is defensedad1 at gmail dot com uh, if you want to go. But we're gonna have it set up at the Nebraska Shooters website. Uh, I think where there you can just uh, it's a twenty five dollar fee, and you can just pay it online and make your reservation for your spot. Okay. Now the question is, you know, do you have to be a YouTuber to do it? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no, but we do have, a, well, I don't know, we kind of have a limited amount of spots. Were you limited to 50? Is that kind of what the limit was? Do you know? We were hoping um, for at least 20 to 25. I, I, I'm going to say if you want to, if, you, if you're serious about uh, coming along, you know, email defensedad1 at gmail.com and email me at thecalibercorner.com if you're interested. And we can, you know, we can certainly talk about it. Um, I, you know, I'm going to say you don't have to be a YouTuber. Maybe you just want to, you're a YouTuber, you just want to come and shoot and meet everybody else and or, you know, we can always use some help at the range, too. So that's always yeah. a possibility. So but be aware yeah. people are going to be stopping to film videos and that sort of thing, too. So Yeah, yeah people are going to say, hey, we're going to go take this spot to, to go film for a couple minutes. I want to show this pistol off or go film a short or something. So if you're going to come out there, you'll, you'll get to shoot with us. But, you know, the idea is there could be some gun, gun content being filmed while we're out there, which means you might show up on camera, too, just as a as a heads up. But if you're cool with that, if you just want to meet everybody and hang out and chill and do some shooting, I mean, I, I think I'm that, fine with it. Right now, we're not at a point where we've reached our max. So. If if I get on someone's camera, I need at least uh, wide angle uh, lens. Three percent, oh. well, besides <laughs> wide angle lens, <laughs> say, too, bro. Three percent of the of the proceeds that my ugly mug um, 
keeps away that's from right. your channel. That's right. We'll, we just, we'll just put a bunch of TikTok filters on your pictures. Yeah, there you go. Put little bunny ears on you and like a little mm. rabbit face or whatever well, kids do. I have well, no idea. Yeah. But 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 the TikTok filters wouldn't be able to distinguish my ugly face versus the background. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Since, <laughs> since we might be filming, that that means two things. Yes. A, you might be on camera. B means Get out of the shot, would you? We're trying to film here. <laughs> you might have to hold the camera, so be ready for that, too. If you can like, hit the power button. so you've got, oh. a, you've got the person standing next to you wanting to have a conversation about their aunt's uh, pancreas surgery or something, and you're trying to film you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. So it, it's there's more than just if you don't want to be seen on camera, uh, you might want to uh, stay behind the, the camera, but also just could you have some courtesy? Yeah, yeah. I, I was going about to say courtesy, like watch language. It, you know, if you see someone filming, walk around, stuff like that. And again, there might be a lot of just chatter about running our channel and giving each other advice, and there might be a lot of YouTube banter and chatter. So if that's not really what you want to be around, just kind of understand that. Yeah, we're coming to shoot, but we're also kind of coming, kind of coming to hang out and stuff. Because again, when we all got together at at I Want to Make her Tulsa a couple of years ago, it was a great experience. We kind of learned from each other, and there was a lot of content that got filmed, and we had a really good time. So um this is something that you know we're kind of open we can bring people together and and we do have you know some options for lodging and stuff like that that's going to be very fair uh you know price wise and stuff like that too so it's not like it has to be an expensive thing just you know the cost of ammo and i'm gonna i'm gonna provide some ammo too to help out kind of offset the cost for some of the guys that are driving up and driving out um let's see here yeah and, and at the ranges that the defense and i shoot at the outdoor ranges filming is okay i've never been told i couldn't film or Take well, pictures and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Where we're shooting is is not a public range. It's actually a yeah. firearms instruction school. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten to know the owner pretty well over the years, so he agreed to do this. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's pretty um, nice. He bu he bumped a real famous trainer for that weekend, so we could have that weekend. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, we that's the weekend. Now. Yeah. That's the weekend. Norma Hood normally teaches his defensive shotgun class, and he bumped bumped him a week for us. Wow, it's like you guys got to wait. For some bottom feeder youtubers that are taking over the range that day so <laughs> I, yep. I don't know who that is okay okay he teaches like uh thunder ranch level classes he's he's actually i think he was an instructor at thunder ranches okay um so a couple questions out here that are showing up gunmetal guy usa says uh at question not related to your proposed range day meeting gunmetal guy usa what's your question did i miss it maybe i didn't see it earlier i'm kind of watching the comments as we all chat right now so uh, but real quick, hey, before we get started and start talking about ranges and so on, the last thing, so they're not a channel sponsor, but they have sent me some samples and they've been great, you know, supporters of the channel anyway, um, rnldisplays.com. Okay, this is the more refined way to display your AR-15 or AR-15 Magwell compatible firearms. So get over to rnldisplays.com. And they've also got uh, for your pistol caliber carbines. Yes, yes, it does take Glock mags. So they've got your Glock mag compatible stand too. Veteran owned, American made. Why don't you guys get over to rnldisplays.com, give them some support. If you use uh, discount code TP11, I get no kickbacks from it, no affiliate money, nothing like that. It's a discount for you guys. If you use discount code TP11, you get 11% off, plus you get an additional 4% off. So you get 15% off, which is way better than anybody else's discount code that's out there. So make sure that you use my discount code. So when you think of rnldisplays.com and you think of me, think of TP11. All right, so there we go. All right, um, yeah. So let's just get right into the idea of the ranges here. So we're talking about ranges. So where I live, I live in a fairly big city. I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'll just be honest with you guys. Um, I've got something like five to six range options I can choose from. I am currently a member of the Isaac Walton Range, uh, which is on the outskirts of Lincoln, Nebraska. It's actually, I believe, it's outside of city limits, which it has to be because of noise ordinances and stuff like that. Uh, I've been a member for two years now. At least I think I just renewed for my second year. I pay defense that what do we pay 160 a year yeah it's what well you can it depends on how many ranges you want to use i don't i don't yeah. pay for the automated trap but yeah so i pay 160 yeah. a year 160 will get you access to what three or four different ranges that you can go play on pistol so, uh, so rifle. Uh, yeah ranges are those individual three rifle three individual rifle. shooting zones yeah. yeah individual separate shooting zones that you can go shoot at that have different distances yeah, yeah there's three okay actual so, so rifle ranges and then a separate pistol range an archery range and a fishing pond oh, okay so so you that 160 gets you access to certain bays on the property yeah, yeah, you have okay, access okay. to. We they call it, they call it range one, range two, range three, range four. That's how they that's how they actually word it out. If here. you want to use okay. the automated trap range, it's an extra forty dollars, which I don't shoot trap. 
Yeah. And I signed up for it and I was going to, and then the ammo crisis hit and then there was no more 12 gauge to be found. So I decided not to. So I'm sitting on basically a trap season's worth of stuff right now that I'm probably not going to shoot anytime soon. But yeah, they do have an automated trap range, which is really nice. It's actually used by high school teams, local high school teams for competition and training. Uh, and it's, 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 I believe voice activated. You say pull and it throws the clays. Now they got bays that throw them automatically. Really nice ones. Really nice setup. And if you are a trap fan, that's definitely the way to go. That's a, you know, it's, it's a great thing for people to get into. Um, and so, yeah. And the nice thing about this is I don't have to pay, you know, there's a lot of places where you pay for a membership and that gets you a discount on your range fees, like your, your, your bay time. But for this, you can go out as long as it's not being used by another group organization or class, you can go out there. I think it's like what seven in the morning until nine or ten o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night until sunset. Yeah, sun up to sundown, and yeah, you literally with us, you you literally back up ten feet from where you're going to load and shoot for your for your rest. Yeah, you just drive right up to it. It's awesome. You don't have to pay. So stuff like that. There's a lot of features that I like about this range. The proximity to the targets, the fact that it's not always super crowded, especially like during the weekdays in the morning, you can have the entire whole range, if you will, like that particular range one, range two, to yourself. When I was out there shooting, whenever I defense that, when I talked to you last time, there was nobody else out there. So it's kind of nice to go to one that's not necessarily, and since it's out there a ways, a lot of people don't necessarily shoot there, um, but they do have quite a few memberships. Um, yeah, I was there They've also got the clubhouse. They've got uh, classes that they host. You have to, now the, on the other end though, also, there, there's, there, I don't think there's a range officer in there unless you go to like the 300 yard range and then there has to be one there when you're shooting just right. because of people putting their targets up and coming back and stuff. But you police yourself while you're out there. Um, you get to keep your own brass, which is another huge benefit from it. Nobody's you can leave your brass if you want in certain buckets, and there's people that come pick it up if you don't want to, you know. Um, so it's got it's got a lot of features. It offers a lot of value. Now, the con about this is it's outdoors. And in Nebraska, that means there's a couple months out of the year where unless I have to go out and film, I won't go shoot because it's freezing, 32 degrees, zero degrees, sub-zero. And so you can go out, but you know, they do a pretty good job keeping it maintained and plowed and stuff. But, uh, you know, the weather is going to knock out a couple months, you know, out of those out of the year when you can actually go shooting. So, yeah, that's that's yeah, probably I, I was, con about having an outdoor for, membership. What's that? I was, there, I was there for two hours yesterday. and I had the place completely to myself. It was really peaceful. Yeah, it's not. And it's completely surrounded by trees. It's it's isolated. It's outside of city limits. It's nice and quiet. You're surrounded by nature. It's just it's awesome. Right. Um, so, they do have, so and, but yeah, what are ahead, like yeah. on those? ranges that you have are those bays you have access to um because yeah we, i mean whenever we start talking about bays and ranges we have to define because for me a range is the entire plot of land um oh, okay. that i have okay. access okay. to or um like if i go to the indoor range i have access to the indoor facility and yeah. if i want to do bow right outside i could do that as well um but so on those bays that you can shoot at um can you like go to the pistol bay and go i want to move instead of just stay in my lane like are there any restrictions on that or can you like take uh have a 50 yard bay and and run around with a pistol or run around with a rifle or or what well so that gets into some of the limitations we might be talking about i'm guessing of this but... particular range now the one that i belong to out in central nebraska if you watch me i was all over the place there was no if i had that range, if i had that particular spot of base to myself they're not even base it's an open field with a backstop and boards i could run around do whatever i wanted to yeah so that, that, yeah that's what my question this is one. because the, i i have access to um the range out here in oh. kansas city east of kansas city um pioneer gun club it is an NRA range. There are a lot of NRA style rules associated with it. Um, so everything is very linear. They do have some bays that you can run around on, but they're pistol only, no steel. You can't take rifles on it. So if you want to like shoot and move a little bit with your um, carbine, um, you know. carbine, you can't. Yeah, yeah. You cannot have. Um, no no helmets no body armor you can't uh have like like shoot teams like you and a buddy you could both be shooting but it can only be one at a time on a bay you can't get into communication and start moving around and shooting like that is a big no-no um like there's only two bays where you can shoot steel um they have it's it's 
it's very fud ish. Um, you can't take rifles onto the pistol range where you can move around. Rifles, they have they have rifle ranges, two bays that are okay. Is it is it so? Are, we're talking about restrictions. You guys and people watching, you're going to see there's going to be a whole just dynamical okay. range of what, what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. When we, and that's something that might be appealing to you to be able to have access to do something or not. Is it fudish or is it a liability issue? Is it an insurance issue or is it is it is it regulations? Uh, I mean. Because it, it's you can say, well, it's so restricted, it's so you know by the book, and it's so regulated. But is that just be, for safety's sake? I mean, you know, I I don't know if well, I want somebody running around next to me in the bay, like buddying up, shooting, you know, doing you know, and I'm right right next to him, just trying to you, know, you see what I'm saying? So it's, mm -hmm. it's different. I go to the two different ranges. The one where we're having the range day, those are classes. There you move around. You're not you have to carry holster. But at the one that Travis and I shoot at the most, it's kind of what's good, what Tra what Foose is saying. Where, like, we have what is it, twenty or twenty-five shooting rests at each rifle bay and, we, and each rifle range, and then there's, I don't know, probably fifteen pistol ones. But yeah, you can't shoot rifle other than twenty-two at the pistol range. You can shoot pistol at the rifle ranges, but you're shooting twenty-five. Twenty-five yards, yards to start. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it is limited, and then that one, there's no moving around, there's no steel. So it, because so, it it faces, it, so it, it's it's a difference between a range. What you seem to be describing, like if you want to do the moving around in teams, that seems more like a shooting club. Well, so th there's different types. Like the one I'm associated to, just because whenever I moved up here, it's the closest one to me. There is yeah. another one that's about forty minutes away that it's a shooting range. They have all their ranges. Like they, they go out to three, 400 yards. They can, you could take steel and shoot wherever, you know, if you take your own steel out, you could be three feet in front of it. They don't care. You have, um, it, it's shoot at your own risk type thing. And you've mm -hmm. signed it. And then they have six bays that are just 100% open. You bring your own stuff. There's like there's nothing in it. It's just a plot of land with, yeah. with three berms in a horseshoe shape. And if you want to shoot rifles, go ahead. If you want to run around with a pistol or rifle, it's whatever. It's still it's still the same thing. They're not NRA sponsored. They, they don't have the limitations. They are more. It, it it really depends on who's in the organization leadership, um, especially around the Kansas City area. There are some that are really strict NRA. You have to, you know, here are the rules and here are the NRA style of shooting where there's, it's a lot more static shooting versus yeah. you get into an organization that is uh, more up to date with how people enjoy shooting today, which mm -hmm. is moving and shooting. And they seem to have a, a lot less rules as far as, um, moving and shooting and having open bay and being able to put steel out there, stuff like yeah. that. So it, it, you have to look at the, at the organization and go, what is the, what's the culture of the organization? I mean, yeah, there's, you know, gun culture, just like us, but like, like AWAG, he's more of a long distance culture. I'm more of a pistol culture. We're still in the shooting world, yeah. but our cultures and what we, what we like is different. So my range may work good for him his range may may or may not work good for me it depends on yeah. what you enjoy doing and you have to match the range with your um shooting uh style if you have options and that that's the point i just wanted to say is you know first of all if you're looking for a range what do you want to do do you just want to shoot your pistol on paper and feel safe while you're doing it you know, do you want something that's going to be indoors so it's climate controlled? Do you want something outdoors with some shade? What exactly do you want? So that's why if a lot of these ranges offer like a one day, a day pass or like a come visit us day, or you, maybe they'll offer like a class. You want to just see what it feels or just just go visit the range and ask for a tour and see how it feels. You know, how are the prices? Uh, and again, prices can vary. I mean, there's some really fancy gun clubs where you'll pay hundreds of dollars per month to, to, to be a member and you still don't get the free range time, the actual bay time you still have to pay for it. And then there's other places like ours where you pay a flat fee and you can go shoot as much as you want. It's like a buffet, man. Um, so you really got to think, you know, what do you want to do? So do some research before you go, but actually go visit the facility. 
Because even if it's like maybe you didn't want to join an outdoor range, maybe you prefer shooting indoors, you, you mm-hmm. climate control, remember the weather, weather could be a reason why you do like maybe nine months out of the year, it's 95 degrees and humid, you hate shooting outside. So you want to kind of look for whatever is going to appeal best to you to what you want to do. Do you want to do the tactical training? Do you want a place that's going to offer classes? Do you want an all in one that has a, a clubhouse and has a coffee bar? Right. So, so Squib, I'm going to start off with you. The range that you belong to, I mean, do you have a lot of options and why did you join the range that you did? I mean, the obvious answer is going to be, well, I need a place to shoot. Does it offer anything that appeals to you more than just having a backstop? Squib, what would you say? I'm going to start with you. We're going to go around the wire. So my range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it that the, do you have a lot of options for places to go shoot or is it just the closest one and it's all you got or what is it? What is the reason why you stay a member? Well, first off, I, I'm not a member of any range. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I should just assume that uh, yeah, not everybody has to join and pay a membership dues so, to go shoot in a range. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm not I'm okay. not opposed to that, but I can tell yeah. you that the, the ranges in my area, the membership fees are high, and the people there are nothing but a bunch of snobs. They really are. Uh, I really don't care for being in that crowd. The other thing is they require you to give up your free time to – volunteer at functions at the at the range that generates money for the range or things like that and i don't like that there was one that's about uh hour and 10 minutes away where they have two fees you can pay the lower fee and then volunteer your time or you can pay the higher fee and they hire out people almost everybody there just pays a higher fee because they want their free time mm-hmm. so and i understand why they do that at some of but i just I don't have the time for that. And like I said, I'm not just not going to deal with, with snotty people. Uh, so That's I another can... thing too, joining. I didn't think about this. There may be time requirements where you have to come maintain the grounds yep. or you have yep. to do cleanup days or you're obligated to rack up. Like my stepdad's, I think he has to do three hours a year. So he goes out and mows a couple times and he's done. Yeah. So, so yeah. At, we'll at, what, what's, what's we'll crazy at my range is like, whenever it comes down to the FUD life or the mentality is they do range maintenance uh, every Tuesday morning uh, or every the first, sorry, the first uh, Tuesday morning of every month. They go out there and do range and they wonder why none of the youth, uh, youth shooters, you know, they say youth shooters, but what they're talking about is 20s to 50s comes out there and helps. And it's because like uh, we're, working working we're, <laughs> so we're trying to keep money yeah go ahead Squib. to give yeah. you an example the nearest yeah. range to me is literally 10 minutes up the road you have to know somebody that's there in order to get in it's expensive and then you have to volunteer your time now you're thinking volunteer your time you're, you're mowing the lawn no they have a banquet hall there you are the bartender for a wedding reception somebody is paying no. to rent that banquet hall that they use for other functions right so now you're working the bar all night. That's your job, right? This place has got an indoor and outdoor range, archery and shooting. It has a banquet hall and it has a racetrack, okay? They host a lot of things. I can hear gunfire in my backyard for, off in the distance, right? I mean, it's 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 a nice setup. If you went there, you'd be like, wow, these guys are decked out. I mean, they literally have a racetrack there. <laughs> it's, and it's all surrounded by by – uh, woods and 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 swampland and stuff like that. So they've got a pretty decent buffer zone, and they've been there so long. They're so well established. They're not going anywhere. I don't want to be a member of that because everybody there is a bunch of stuck up a holes. Uh, so the next nearest range to me is a state run range, and I like that range uh, because it's ten minutes away. It's family friendly. It's new shooter friendly. And it's four dollars to shoot all day long for anybody oh, wow. above the age of 14. 14 and under is free. You can literally leave, go have lunch, and come back, and you don't pay again. But because it's close, because it's affordable, because it's family friendly, uh, if you go on the weekends, you're usually on a waiting list. Now you could be waiting 10 minutes, you could be waiting two hours. It really you're sitting on the bench waiting, or you can sit in your car and they'll they'll text you. Uh, it's, it's a really nice setup. It's, it's safe. They've expanded it. The NRA, the evil NRA expanded the range and put in restrooms and all kinds of stuff. So it's even better than what it was when I first started going out there. What I don't like about it is because of where it's at, our shooting stations are cramped. 
and we're shooting through giant suppressors. We really are. There are these baffles that they built into them to reduce the noise. Mm -hmm. It's because the rich people that live on the other side of the lake from the range donate heavily to the local politicians. They have threatened to shut down this range because of the noise. Mm -hmm. And they have the means to do that because all they have to do is just wave their pocketbook in front of local politician A and they'll say, yeah, we need to shut down this this, this state-run range. Yep, so, same here. The, we're we're We are in the process of putting baffles. It's basically like metal, a metal roof type structure over a lot of the bays at a cost of almost $400,000 for a 30 foot section oh, of water bays. And Jeez. like, they're like, what, cause what it is it's the property has been that been in ownership since the early eighties, but people have then moved around and started complaining about the noise. Kind of like what squib was just saying. So we are grandfathered in that we cannot do a range improvement. If we do a range improvement on the physical land, we have to mitigate noise for that that new that uh, that modification. So if if we want to blow out a berm and make a fifty yard range into a hundred yard range, we then have to mitigate the noise off that entire hundred yard range. So as long as we don't do any earthwork movement, we're good. But we are wanting to. There's a few of us that are wanting to take and have some more dynamic bays where they are just completely open because at this range, every bay has something NRA related hmm. um, type shooting, whether it's PCP or, um, or cowboy shoot the cowboy shooters. Oh God, there's like three. Of so, them. and this is a good reason why you want to visit all the ranges in your town and decide on the one that feels best to you, because there might be certain things about a range you don't like or extra requirements you're not planning on having to fulfill because you don't want to join and spend all this money and then get booted out after a year or yeah, find so, out that it's not what you thought it was you know so, so that's what was odd is like the ranges around here you have to know someone in the range to get to the range but you can't just come out and visit and see what it is like me coming in i didn't have the option of going out mm -hmm. previously and looking at the range to see if this range is going to be good for me. Check online to see if they at least mention what the range, if they even have a website, if they mention what the, what the range has to offer, like what kind of distances can you shoot at? So, but, but, but yeah. that doesn't, you, you can't get the culture of a range just by reading. Yeah. And no. the thing is, if your friend is a member and you think, well, they're my friend. So everybody else is going to be like that. That's not necessarily a good gauge of how the range is. However, uh -huh. with it around here, you have to know somebody to get into any of these private clubs that's your first obstacle. That's your first hurdle. And they're vouching for you. Uh, but like Fu said, you might get in and then find out this ain't for me. Now, mm -hmm. I've seen people come up to the state range without guns and go to the check-in station and talk to the range safety officers and ask them, what are the rules? What's it cost? What can I do? For example, a lot of people don't like the range I'm at. Oh, well, I'll get back to the, the baffles. So I don't like the shooting stations because it literally puts so much shade on top of the gun. My old eyes, I can't see the sights. If I'm out in the mm. open, I can see the sights. I can hit the target. I'm yeah. literally squinting and struggling to see. Mm -hmm. the, and it, it, it's terrible. I mean, yep. it'd be like it'd be like shooting with an umbrella over you constantly. Mm -hmm. But an, well, engin an engineer designed this to be more or less like a giant suppressor in each station so they didn't lose the range because that was what was happening. More and more people were buying houses on the lakes, and these people have got tons of money. And they started making threats. So a guy designed these things to mitigate the noise, and that kept the range open. And it kept the range open for everybody. It's just like um, the NRA spent all the money to expand it because the place was just packed. It was so popular. And that helped more people come out. And like I said, it's family-oriented. It's, it's, it's new shooter-oriented. It's not for everybody. You'll have the person come out there. We uh, have uh, one shot every three seconds, no mag dumps. Mm -hmm. That it instantly makes people turn around and leave. And I've watched people been told again and again, slow down your fire or you're going to leave. And they don't like it. I Man, actually watched somebody try to get into a, an argument with the range safety officer over it. Squid, the look on your son's face when you shot at my range out in Lexington, Nebraska, oh, yeah. when he got to do his mag dump with the yeah. 1022. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I do another mag dump? Dad, that's something that every father wants to hear. The reason <laughs> they have the slow rate of fire is to mitigate the noise. Literally, it, mm -hmm. the, if, if it sounded like you know, 35 machine guns going off constantly. Once again, the rich people across the lake would shut us down. And it's like, do you want to ruin it for yourself and everybody? Or do you want to, 
you know, keep this range open. Yeah. And people, people don't care. I want to do my mag dump because that makes me a man. It's like, no, dude, it means you can't hit the broadside of a barn. That's not <laughs> the kind of range this is. This is a range for sighting in your rifle for hunting. This is a range for taking new people. This is a range where, where work, people from work will, you know, do a, like a team building exercise and come up there on the weekend. And the one person is the gun person and everybody else at work is the office pogue who's never shot a gun. That sort of thing happens at my range. So, you got, you got dad taking his two daughters cause it's his parenting time on the weekend. That's my range. My range is not for you, Mr. Tactical. Well, and here's something to think about. And maybe, maybe this is, I'm just going by my own, my own experience and maybe we're spoiled here, but I chose a range that I'm, I belong to for the bulk of my shooting. But then if I want to go do steel shooting or I want to go do steel challenge, or if I want to go do whatever, I've got three or four other places I can go do that occasionally. But my main membership is the one that suits my needs the best. Cause growing up, if we wanted to shoot, we just went out to the family farm. You know, that was yeah no big deal. But around here, like I, there's, I, I don't know, there's four or five different places you can go shoot, and all of them offer something slightly different. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, so if you yeah. want to do rapid fire, about 90 minutes away, there's a state-run range where they shoot machine guns, okay? They shoot machine guns. You literally back your pickup truck or SUV, because showing up to the range in a car is bad etiquette, Right yeah, I know. When I show up with my Hyundai Kona, I just feel so inadequate next to all the Silverados <sighs> and uh, well, I mean, you are. You are so, oh, inadequate. Boost, it's good boost, range boost. etiquette, but here's the thing. At this range, you literally want a tailgate or a lift gate or something because you back it up to the shooting station. And you can shoot anything pretty much any way, and then there's no range safety officer. Everybody's got to agree, all right, we're going down range to reset targets or whatever. And it just works out. But you got to get there early. Because there are people that show up and they're there all day. And believe me, they, they bring machine guns out to this range and it's totally illegal. It's 90 minutes one way to get out there. I, I've been out there before. I, the drive alone is enough for me to go, screw that. But yeah. people get mad when they come to my state-run range for the first time because they like the $4 fee. They like that their kids shoot for free. They, you know, they, they like a lot of that stuff. But then as soon as they're told, the, another rule, no more than six rounds in a gun unless it's an M1 Garand. That is the only exception. And you oh, might geez. go, well, wait a minute. What I've got a 30-round mag. You can put a 30-round mag in there, but you can't put more than six no rounds. Than because six when rounds. they call cease fire, fire off what you have loaded. Fire off what you have loaded. You know, that's what they say. All right, now, if you got 29 more rounds in there, now, of course, you could just clear the, the rifle. But, you know, yeah, you Goober isn't going to do that. The Goober is going to be there going, okay, one round every three seconds. Watch me milk this. Now, everybody's waiting on you. And believe me, that has happened where even with somebody with six rounds in their gun, you've got that idiot with their 300 win mag with three rounds taking like five minutes between shots and we're all sitting there waiting going hey man the sun is setting we'd like to do another target change <laughs> and yeah so they they I know have that rules, guy <laughs> they have the rules about the limitations on how many rounds you can have you can have a drum they don't give a crap just don't put more than six rounds in the drum and there's a reason behind all of it and a lot of people don't like that and they stomp their feet and grip it. go to another range a hole seriously go to another range it's just not that sort of range. And for what I do, I'm testing out a reload. I'm sighting in my rifle for deer season. I'm, I'm just out there just having some fun, doing some target shooting. I don't need to have a belt-fed machine gun and be doing, you know, I, I'm not against that stuff, but I just don't need that for what I do. If that's what you do, find your own place. You and know? that comes back to the culture of the property where you're at. Like here, you know, here look, we don't have any of those rules. Like you only have to have thirty or whatever, or six rounds or uh, yeah. three seconds. But if you want to go down range, you sit there and you will look at it, look at someone else, you know, whoever's, and you, you go up there and ask them like, "Hey, I'm wanting to, I'm looking to go down range. Um, is there a way we could, you know, take a break or something like that?" And it's, it's, you know, talking. Um, the culture is. If you want to go down range, you talk to other people on that range. Yeah. Now, at my range that you used to be able to draw from the holster, they took that away, unfortunately. But you can open carry. So you, it sounds kind of weird, but you can open carry at the range. Just don't draw at the shooting station. If you cross that yellow line, your gun better be in a case. You're not taking a gun. And let's say you want to move from one shooting state. You want to go from 50 to 25. 
You have to case up your stuff and walk it down. You, you have to check with the range officer first to make sure there's a 25 open. Let them know what you're going to do. Case up your stuff. Take it over. Some people don't want to do that. Eh, I don't want to. They have these rules in place so there is no chance that somebody's got a loaded gun behind the firing line pointed in an unsafe direction. And you may not like that, but they have these rules for a reason. The range safety officers are not armed. They can be armed if they wear body armor. That's the state rule. You can carry a gun around. If They don't want to wear the body armor because body armor is hot and uncomfortable. Okay? Everybody thinks it's cool, but it really isn't. Okay? And so they are not armed. Uh, they're actually relying on us. If somebody got belligerent at the range and decided to point a loaded gun at the range safety officer, they're probably going to have 30 other guns pointed at them because nobody – I mean, the people that go there on a regular – like these guys there was a range safety officer there who was a total jerk now he he goes there as a customer because he, he lost his job finally enough complaints they got rid of that guy but my range is not for everybody if you've got to do rapid fire and you've got to uh, to 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 do other stuff uh you know there are other places for you to go but i actually have a good time when i go to my range except when i'm mm -hmm. shooting videos because i'm too busy focus on the stupid camera instead of focus on shooting <laughs> my range. I, I might make it sound like it's miserable, but it, it's actually, like I said, it's a family friendly range. It's a new shooter friendly range. Uh, if you go in hunting season, it's hard to get a, 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 a lane, but you can pick up so much brass. I can get 450 Bushmaster like crazy in October free brass. That's another thing. At my range, you can pick up all the brass you want. No questions Same. asked. Just yeah, and if you, shoot a, if you shoot a really expensive caliber and they have a no, you can't keep your brass policy, you might want to get an agreement with them before you start shooting. Like, say, look, yeah. I got 4570 here. You're not getting my brass. Or I've got whatever, something unusual, some odd brass yeah, that's so, expensive, you know. Yeah. So so the ranges with the brass, um, I look at that as that is another way they are. Um, Into ranges especially, generating revenue. Well, not, not generating, re brass. generating revenue, yeah. but it's a... I look at that as a usage fee. Like you could, uh, you could take and go into the range, whatever, and you're free. You know, you sign up. Let's say it's for the indoor range. It's 100 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. That's to get in there. But if you're, if it's a, you know, lose your brass range, I mm -hmm. look at that as a usage fee. Now, see, so I like, can. Oh, go ahead. Well, I can go in, pay my four dollars, and spend two to four, two to six hours shooting. Multiple guns, multiple ranges, different targets, right? And then load up on brass, and I come home with over $100 and use brass. So they're paying me to shoot. <laughs> yeah, basically. Right, well, but, but that's a here's, user, here's user user that. Here's something I'll say about four bucks. So, okay. Here's something I'll say about, like, because people complain about rules at ranges. They just do. But unless you have a family land or a friend who has land or something you can access, like, what, so what do you do? You're either gonna, not going to shoot. Or are you just going to sit there and constantly complain about rules? Like that, if you want a place to shoot you're, and you don't own land, you're going to have to put up with some of that stuff. But the, mm -hmm. it's better than not shooting because I don't know about so, you hey, guys. I want to defend said I want to give you a chance to talk because you you need to go. You're going to be going to work. You need to go to work. You're going to go to work here in a little bit. Um, the ranges you belong to. What is it? What features do they have? What appeals to you about those ranges? Why do you keep paying your membership? Aside from again having a backstop to shoot at, what are, what kind of little features do they have that really makes it appeal to you? Well, so I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm only a member at the one, but yeah, so, but you shoot. Okay, you shoot at two. Why do you go to the other range? What what do they offer that what that one does or one doesn't? So the other range offers classes, and unlike our range where you cannot draw from a holster, you're required to carry your uh, firearm and holster there because there's no back, there's no benches at a regular place. But that's also a place you can take classes. You can shoot the steel. You can do that that sort of stuff. You can't do at just our regular range. Mm -hmm. Or like sometimes over lunchtime, if I just want to go shoot and have some fun, I'll run out to DE and they have steel out there, which we don't have at our range. So there's every place seems to offer something different. Or if we want to go, if I want to go to one of the indoor ranges, because so far the three that I've described are all outdoor. So there's a, a really good ranges. one is the Nebraska Outdoor Education Center. It's inexpensive. It's completely climate controlled. It's wonderful. That's a wonderful. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just it's a long ways away from where I live. So it's easier for me, especially if I'm going to film, it's a little bit of a pain to film indoors. But and that also has archery if you're into archery and they've got classes they teach there. You just got to go through their like 15, 20 minute training session. And then after that, you're good to go. So yeah, that, that's a that's a really nice range if you're ever in Nebraska and Lincoln. 
some of the things too about it is like the indoor range is like they're open later. So especially during, during the winter time when it gets dark at five o'clock, five, well, I, I can't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't get to the range after, after work to go shoot. So, but some of these, these places are open until seven or eight. So if I want to go get some shooting in, or you can do drills, like we have static targets at, at the Walden league, but if you want to do drills where you're starting at three, seven for whatever, that's a good reason to go to a, the indoor range. But overall, I keep going back year after year to the Walden range because it's cheaper. Because at $160 a year, when I first found out about that, I had been shooting at the indoor range for three months. And I'd spent more than that just in range fees. Yeah. Because our around here, it's one, the one place where you can go outside and shoot steel and do steel challenge if you want to. That's $25 a day, but it's still $25 plus your ammo. Or the indoor ranges are what twenty one dollars an hour. No, Nebraska Outdoor Education Center I think is is like seven or eight bucks an hour. See, I and then they have discounts way. on Fridays. But if you don't mind going up there, sometimes you have to make a reservation because they're going to be busy. But that's one of the least expensive ones. But you're also enjoying yeah. the indoors. It's by the hour, and within an hour indoors, you can do quite a bit of shooting, and they can set you up for rifle. But then again, you got to watch out because you can't shoot um, your steel case and ammo with like the bimetal bullets. You've got lead ammo only. Or maybe copper, yeah. but but not. You can't shoot your cheap. What, what, steel what's case. their backstop? Is it a rubber? That one, one, yeah. That indoor range does not allow the steel case ammo. Okay. All the other ones that I don't know about the right, other ones, defense that you shoot at, but what, what I'm asking it's it's a lot of times it's it's the backstop. If it's a steel yes. backstop, you're okay. If it's a rubber backstop, uh, you can actually has cause fires and stuff with the steel case stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't know, but all I know is if it's non magnetic ammo, you can't shoot it. That's just at that one okay. particular indoor range. Now the outdoor range is that. The outdoor range that I shoot at, the Isaac Wall, you can shoot whatever you want for ammo. You're shooting it at dirt, so okay. it doesn't really matter. So, so yeah, so so defense said there's like offering classes, maybe the types of targets that they offer. Um, yeah. You know, having like, an on site some instruction if you need it, or even having rentals, be able to get a rental gun right there and just go 25 feet into the base and shoot. That's always convenient too because our outdoor ranges don't do that. The ones that we belong to don't. So and we have a lot of choices here. Like literally there's five places I can go shoot with it. I don't have to drive more than 20 minutes to get to either one of them, which I know yeah. a lot of people aren't in that situation. Yeah, I'm yeah, less than 10 minutes from where we shoot. So it's just easy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so there's, there's indoor gun ranges. There's the outdoor one that also has indoor facilities built in the forties that I go to. There's one, like I'm on the Eastern side of Kansas city uh, in a suburb there's one that is on the western side of Kansas City that it's it's a 50 minute drive at highway speed to get there that is the one i want to go to but because i'm not going to make a 50 minute drive one way two three four times a, a week on uh depending on the time of year that's not okay like there are some friends of mine that or just south of the city, they're going to go there because it's equidistant between the range that I'm associated to and that one. So those are two main ones, and there's a couple up north. And so they're going well, over there. If, if I was another 10 minutes away, I would be going to that range. But yeah. it it's just makes it very difficult, especially with the increase of everything, prices of everything. It's, it's yeah. not optimal for me. Well, I'm not... I shouldn't say it's not optimal. It's cost prohibitive. Okay. My Even though it's cheaper was, to go to that one. My whole point I was getting at, though, is I hear, like what Squib was saying, people complain. I hear, Even at our range, I hear people complain that there's no rapid fire. You can only do a double tap every few seconds. Or you, you can't carry from a holster. Or there's no steel. But people complain about it. But, man, if you got a place to shoot... They, they have those re those rules for safety and a reason, but at least you have a place to shoot. This is true. I mean, a lot of people, we just you might not have an option at all. So Now, um, I've considered buying my own land to shoot on because I can shoot on my friend's private property. But now I've got to be there when they're there. we got to be on the same schedule. And my friends either don't know that mm -hmm. I'm a YouTuber or I don't give them my YouTube channel. I don't involve my friends and family in my youtube stuff i don't so it's a little bit rude for me to go hey could you stay out of the shot and they go oh by the way where's this film gonna be you know i i just i've done it before and i really don't like doing it so when i've been on private like when i did my suppressor video 
I was I was on my friend's uh, private property up north using his gun, and he was in the background, and I felt rude saying, no, I don't want you going to my channel and watching this, right? And so I just don't like to do that. I've considered buying my own land, but if I'm going to be moving out of state, now that's one more thing that um, you know got, I got to deal with or whatnot. I, I've, and if I end up uh, living in the suburbs, I might buy 10 acres out in the country so I can shoot on my own land or something like that. And once again, it's a drive, but it's my land. It's my time. It's my rules. It's whatever, you know, within whatever the state has for me to, to be able to, to do that. But um, shooting on private property is just kind of a hassle for me. But if I wanted to shoot whatever way I wanted, then that, that would be the, the way I would go. It's mm -hmm. just, it's impractical for me to drive three hours up north and then use the map that they give you to navigate to find out which plot of land is state land. And <laughs> then there's other regulations as far as shooting on state land. It, it, it can be done, but 10 minutes, you know, once again, it, the, the, the range appeals to me. It's not going to appeal to somebody else who mm -hmm. feels that they need to do this and need to do that. And I might be making it sound like it's a bad place to shoot, but it really isn't. It really isn't. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that, that's why you have to look at the, it goes back to the culture of it because even though like it's a like NRA sponsored, that's cool. There's are going to be some NRA rules, but it's still the cult comes down to the culture of the, um, of the actual range to see if it matches your shooting or your, your thoughts, your ideas of what a range should be. Now, to a new person, they might not have any idea. So there's just there's a statement that was made out here on the YouTube side. I don't want to address this, and I'll come back to you guys. So here's somebody out here that says, and this is, I mean, this is a, a valid argument. Sam Hyde says, have you ever seen the videos of idiots at gun ranges? I don't want to go because I don't want to die or end up in the hospital because someone doesn't understand gun safety. So, Sam, that's why you look for a range that might have what you feel is a regulated routine for shooting, like what Squibb's mentioning. <clears throat> Limited shot speed, you know, you know, cease fire, six rounds per mag, present range officer, range safety officer. A lot of those videos that you see uh, on YouTube, they're not necessarily range videos, or if they are, they're like open public ranges. I, but yeah, there's going to be morons that whip the guns around that shoot out the ceilings. That stuff, that stuff happens. But at the regulated ranges I've ever gone to, I've never seen anybody misbehave. And the one that I'd shoot at on a normal basis doesn't have a range safety officer on site. Uh, for the the bulk of the actual zones that you go shooting in, but to be a member of that club, I mean they they say if anybody's you know if anybody is doing something inappropriate or wrong or you had to call somebody out for something, let us know because we want to make sure somebody's not being you know compulsively unsafe. So so that's where it comes to a gun, a public or private gun range. If it's a public oh, yeah. gun range, yeah, yeah, I I I do not go to public gun ranges. I don't know how many loaded unquote un. Quote, un "Quote unquote loaded, unloaded firearms." I've had pointed to me. Um, yeah, but like, it depends on where you are. Like where I'm at, the little dirt hill I used to go shoot at when I first started my channel before I joined the range was you'd be lucky if there's one other person out there. But if there's two or three people out there shooting, it's like well, you know, yeah. it's <laughs> it's like yeah, I don't know if I really like this. If somebody else like some. There are times where I'd be off 90 degrees off to this guy's right. We're both shooting this way at the same target, but he's he's off to my right, and I'm shooting that way. He's off. You know, it's like. Uh, no, I'd rather have some sort of something to shoot down so I know I don't have to worry about somebody flagging me, you know? Yeah, so the, uh, um, the ones that are, there's no membership, you just go out there, pay your five bucks or whatever, and go shoot. I do not go to those at all anymore. Yeah. Um, I have, I've had a couple close calls, not only rounds uh you know loaded guns firing at me but i was down range and other people started firing down oh range. god yeah no so um, so yeah you want to go yeah. to some place that's going to have some sort of rso on site and you're not going to the chances of something happening can always happen even, anything well, can happen, well, but it's going to be less it doesn't even have to be that it could be a private gun range where you actually have to take and um go there and go through orientation stuff like that yeah Hey, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Tan Hat, Tan Hat for the uh, super chat out there. Uh, he says, thank you so much for the Patreon package. It was very generous and I'll make use of everything in it. Uh, good morning to everybody watching on the show and keep up the great content. Yeah, so I do a monthly Patreon drawing. And if you want to sponsor the channel, the buy-in is a buck a month. And we do a nice bundle of swag that we send out. We actually did two packages that I sent out so that, that I sent out uh, last month. And we'll be doing the March drawing probably in two weeks when I'm on spring break. 
and uh, I'll put together a nice, nice package. So Tan Hat, it's great to hear from you. You didn't have to super chat, but it's just one of the perks. I've only got 55 patrons. So you got a pretty good chance of winning and you can win more than once. Like you can win one month, the next month, the next month, if I draw you out of the box. So yeah. So check it out. So, so uh, can, can yep. you draw me out of the box the month you are uh, giving away your shadow too? Oh, giving away the shadow too. No, but I am going to be giving away an AR-15 if I make it to 50,000 subscribers. If that happens and the channel gets 50, I'm giving away an AR for what it's worth. You know, if you don't want it, that's fine. Somebody else will probably happily yeah. take it off you. But uh, yeah. I, I, I was going to say, if I win that month, give it to someone else. I have four of them. Oh, okay. it's, it's all rigged. I never give win. It to someone. So defense. I know defense would be so easy. I wouldn't have to pay shipping. And Foose, if I see you this summer, I can just give you your box this summer instead of paying. Shipping's not bad, but I pay like 13 or 14 bucks every box I send out. But uh, but still. So anyway, enough of that. All right. So so back to the range talk. Yeah, go ahead. Um. So I've had a couple of situations. Um, so I am in a little bit of a predicament. I have a local um, gun shop to me that has a range. It's only 25 yards, but they won't let you shoot anything larger than a 30 out six. And they get really, really butthurt if you take a Mosin in there. Um, you're not allowed to shoot steel case and I, I can understand their indoor ranges and stuff like that. They're, they're very, very strict on what you can and cannot do since it's an indoor range. But I usually take my rifles in there to just get a basic 25 yard zero and then I'll take it to a public range that's about 40 minutes away from me. Um, you know, they... If I wanted to like zero in my uh, 300 wind mag, I'd have to go out to the uh, the public range. And I've had so many, um, you know, instances of just people being complete and utter morons. Um, you know, it's just this last time that I went out, I was trying to sight in my 300 wind mag at 100 yards of shooting at little golf balls. And I had my own homemade, since it's a public range, there's no hangers, there's no nothing. It's just a dirt berm. And, you know, it's, it's very, very basic. So I made myself a little, uh, one foot by one foot, um, square target holder, you know, like the, uh, those Birchwood Casey, um, you know, shoot and see targets, you just staple one of those to it and then you put it out at a hundred yards and that's how I zero my stuff in. Um, and you know, the price of wood is, is kind of expensive. I probably paid like 10 bucks to, to build a couple of them. Um, you know, but it's something that I put effort into and there's, uh, multiple bays at this local, uh, public range. And when you're, when you're shooting something like a large caliber, like the 300 wind mag, uh, that I am, you know, I hand load those things and it's like two or $3 around, uh, you know, I want to make sure that every single round that's, um, you know, coming out of my gun is hitting at least that target so I can get a, a zero. I set my target out there and I'm sitting there re ready to shoot. And then some, uh, uh, I had to stop myself. I almost, oof, I almost uh, <laughs> swear real bad there, but some idiot, um, decided to just bring out a bump stock, an actual bump stock and just started blasting away at my target. And I immediately like yelled at the top of my lungs, cease fire everybody started looking at me and i'm just like what are you doing dude your target is over there did you fail gun safety because you obviously did not know what is behind your target and why are you shooting across the bay into my target what is wrong with you mm -hmm. like so I, his response <laughs> he's like oh sorry <laughs> well, i didn't know it was behind me i was just like go back to gun safety class and actually pay attention for once Oh, I was heated. I actually lost my cool. And it, it Dang, man. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, but, and so the, and do understand though, that if you do join a, a gun club or you join a range, these things can happen. It's not always going to be perfect. You may see unsafe things happening, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, we need to be good stewards for gun safety because the last thing we want is anybody getting shot or getting killed or anybody getting hurt. So yeah, you really got to, especially when it comes to, to flagging or, or point, keep the muzzle pointing yeah. down range and stuff. And, and here's yeah. here's the thing too is is keep your head on a swivel and do not absolutely do not be afraid to call people out if they're doing something completely stupid. Yeah, I mean people are there to enjoy it, and and Hootie Who makes a pretty good point. He Hootie Who is joining us, so it's good to see uh, Hootie Who out there watching. He had said something like he doesn't like to go to ranges that have range safety officers because he's you know had situations where they're just like range Nazis basically where. 
you know, you're just, they stand right behind you the whole time and they got to give you feedback after every magazine that you shoot and stuff. And, and I understand where you're coming from. And I, I'm always like a little nervous because I'm like, God, I hope I don't screw something up and get thrown out. I'm always more nervous when there's like an RSO on site than not because the shooting I did primarily the first four or five years I was doing my, my videos, it was just me out there at the range, basically alone. I'd be lucky if there's one other person out there. And so I was used to having the freedom to kind of, I wasn't unsafe, but I also could enjoy the space and not have somebody, you know, telling me whatever, trying to give me advice or reminding me of this or that. I mean, I knew to keep the muzzle down range. I didn't put the finger on the trigger until I was ready to shoot, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, there is uh, something to be said about having that, that freedom and, and whatnot. Uh, I'm not, I'm not against that. I would love to have a range like the one in Lexington. I would absolutely love to have that and then be able to go there on a day where maybe, uh, not a lot of people go or a time where not a lot of people yeah, go and have access range. to all yeah, that, the yeah. variety there and all that, and just be able to self-regulate. I'm not opposed mm -hmm. to that at all. Just because my range doesn't, it's 10 minutes away and it's $4 all day. Okay. You know, yeah, that's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. I have indoor ranges around here to go to. And the first thing is the wait list. They are so busy that it, it's, it's hard to get in. Then when you do get in, it's like, uh, what is it? I want to say it's $40 an hour or $30, $30 for 30 minutes. It's ridiculous. If you rent a gun, you have to buy the ammo from them. You can't bring your own ammo. That's kind of a given anywhere. They do provide you safety glasses here, protection, some free targets and stuff, but I, I can bring all that stuff myself. That That's not anything. It's good for somebody new to shooting. It's good for somebody who wants to try out a gun before they buy it. It's good for the person who doesn't own a gun, but they want to shoot, I guess. That would be odd, but okay. It's good for the person who doesn't want to be outdoors. It's good for the person that, you know, but for me, I've done that. And I'm not saying I would never do it again, but it's a lot more fun when you have somebody else paying for it. I've gone to the range before because I've had a, a uh, sales guy say, hey, you want to go golfing? It's like, no, I want to go shooting. And it, it's on their dime. So we go <laughs> shooting on their dime, right? Or uh, are, when, uh, the local oh, yeah. uh, indoor up here has uh, manufacture days where... You know, you go oh, yeah. in there and the manufacturer's got their guns and their ammo and they pay for everything. And then they, you know, they, they cater a meal and everything else. And and they send out emails. You know, it's Glock month, right? It's like, oh, man, I don't know. So well, instead of maybe, hearing like about timeshares, you know, you're hearing about how to finance a, your your yeah, next Henry. Yeah. You know, it, we have a suppressor Saturday today at one of our local ranges. So you can come test out suppressors and learn about them and find out about them and look at the different brands and different styles and become yeah, educated we, on suppressors. So well, well, that's another thing. At my state run range, you can shoot NFA items. Now you might go, well, I thought you couldn't rapid fire. Yeah, if you bring a machine gun, they're not going to let you shoot it. But if it's select mm -hmm. fire, just put on semi-auto. You can shoot SBRs, SBSs. You can have suppressors. You can do all that stuff. Like I said, they used to let you draw from the whole shooting stations. They took that away, which kind of sucks. But yeah. there, there are some some things, uh, you know, about that. That and and at my range, you've got a lot of people that are there for the same reasons I am. So it's very friendly. If there's a new shooter at the range, everybody's going to be like, "Come shoot my gun! Come shoot my gun!" Oh Kids yeah, will yeah. be like, "Oh man, oh, try yeah. this out! Give try this chance, out! Try you know, have you ever shot a suppressor before? Oh, here, come on over to my station because I can't bring it to your station. Come on over here, shoot this." So if you're new to shooting and you want to be in an environment where people are friendly towards you. And are willing to share information. And there's always that guy who's in there saying, I know more about guns than anybody in the world. And just yeah, say, you're never going to do it with me. I know it all. But, yeah, but there's yeah. a yeah. lot of good information, a lot of good. A, <coughs> it, it's a great place for a new shooter. It's not the place where they're going to be thrown in there with a bunch of people who, who know it. Uh, all this stuff, and this person doesn't know anything, and they're expected to, to, to run and jump and shoot and pray and do everything it's just not not that yeah and usually if you just ask somebody next day hey what you know what is that what are you shooting and, you're, and they're hey you want to take a mag you know i that has happened so many times where i've invited people like you want to try it you want to see what this is like you know and mm -hmm. hey just you feel it here i'll get your mag loaded up and you can test and see what you think i mean that's not mm -hmm. uncommon it's kind of this kind of this common kind of idea that we're both in this together even though we both have yeah. firearms for different reasons but so yeah. i've i've taken people they've never shot anywhere other than an indoor range out to our range oh yeah, and the so look on their face is yeah, because you're not you're not you're yeah fifty. You don't have the guy so next to you with yeah with the the AR pistol, you know. Well, and yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I'm yeah, fine with it, too. but it's not comfortable. Somebody's not conditioned to it. Yeah. Well, like one of the gals I I helped shoot, um, she, she you know the last time she went to an indoor range, she's really turned off from it because she got put in a bay right next to a guy shooting. I think it was a 308 with a huge muzzle brake on it. 
and you're oh, two man. feet away from you're two feet away from that person. Concussion. She, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Even even yeah. outdoors, it can be a problem on certain rifle. Like I had guys testing some 50 cal black powders next to me. Another guy was shooting a seven millimeter Remington mag or something right next to me. Like, and it was just it was I it was not comfortable. But yeah, just normal pistol ranges outdoors. Like when I would shoot back in Lexington, the outdoor pistol stuff with no shade over the head, it was so much more quiet. Because that's the first time I took my best friend and his wife out shooting. We took took the G17 out there and played around. And they thought, you know, they didn't know if it was going to be loud or if you're going to feel it or if it was going to, you know, be scary when it goes off. I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. Then we went to the indoor range and it was like we were good for about 30 minutes. They said, OK, we're we're comfy. And then we left, you know. Yeah, so even, that's, with, even yeah. with good ear pro, sometimes, you know, with an indoor session, your ears are ringing, even if you have good ear pro. Yeah, you need to you need to yeah. really if you're not if you've never the- joined a range before, consider the outdoor range. If they've got some cover overhead that can keep you shaded or comfortable, that's nice to have, especially depending on where you're at. But that's something to look for. So or, so single shot, we gotta give single shot a double up. There. Yeah. Inside, yeah, yeah. Double foamy up. and foamy and, and ear foam pro in, over the top. Foam out, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, single shot talk to us about your your shooting experiences what do you belong to a range i know you've got a backyard but like what what do you do if you want to go shooting like what what's your your range situation where you live you're out on the east coast you're up in maine so yeah. what what can well, we I expect got, kind of in your area i got several that's you know fairly close by i've got one that's probably about oh 15 20 miles away that's not bad i my brother and i are going to go out and check that out hopefully this year and uh, there's one that he was a member of. That's that's a good distance away, though. That's about a little bit better than an hour. And uh, uh, he was a member, so he could take uh, gas along with him, which wasn't bad. It was $60 a year, if I, if I recall correctly. Yeah. But uh, uh, another one is up in a town called Hamden, Maine Military Supply. They've got an indoor range. That one there is a little more expensive, but they've got uh, 25 yard uh, uh, indoor ranges, no mm-hmm. outdoor, and mm-hmm. they've got a full uh, firearm store, military supply, uh, stuff like that. They've got uh, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, that's right there on the premises that's available. And I've done quite a bit of business with those guys as well. So, uh, but pretty much for the most part, uh, I've got 110 yards available out back. You know, I can have shorter ranges, obviously, but uh, my mm-hmm. max range out there is 110, okay. and I don't have to worry about uh, too much about the crowds. Most of the time, it's just me, and my brother, and maybe my nephew when he comes up, and uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll shoot and have a good time. But I am going to start into the uh, steel. Uh, steel challenge, oh, SAS? or so, not SAS shooting? Are you doing the single action cowboy shooting? Cool. The, What's the that? Five, five plate steel challenge. Five steel plates, yeah, in different yeah. positions, different, uh, different uh, sequence of uh, firing, and uh, I'm going to try a little bit of that. See how I do with it. I've been loading up a pretty good amount of ammunition, of nine millimeter and forty, so. And if you are a new shooter fun. and you can afford it, do something like that. Go to one of those weekends when they'll have like a challenge or a competition. Oh, yeah. Watch sure. It. You go might be surprised. It. The first time I got to do three gun, man, that was awesome. They had a yeah. they had a, a open range day at the range that I lived at in central Nebraska. So, so uh, it. it was fun, man. Yeah. So, so I, uh, also whenever you do the go to the ranges where there's competition, um like talk to people that are actually members of that range and ask them and ask them the culture like if that is what you are looking to shoot like that certain type of competition talk yeah. to the members of that range and see how that is because we have my my range has uspsa out there yeah but the range isn't set up for it the culture is not set up for it it's there like kind of an afterthought i mean it's it's a dying sport because of our a dying portion of that range because of the culture of the range it right. doesn't yeah. you know the, the culture like of the it. people are pushing it out and it's yeah. really not good i like to uh, uh, i like yeah, to uh, do the imsha uh style as well that's the uh, uh national metallic silhouette so uh, that's a uh, fun thing to get into with well with my uh, background on single shot that's what uh, 
most of those calibers are designed for is to play in that game. And it's always uh, it's always a good thing, like you guys have been mentioning, to get advice, get uh, into a chat or two with some of those guys at the ranges. Now, <clears throat> I'm a little bit adamant about uh, uh, somebody giving uh, advice to somebody. You know, do it in a friendly way. Friendly con- uh, criticism, criticism can help people in a lot of ways. And so, uh, I had a lot of that in my training when I was doing competition shooting myself. I had one of the, about the best mentors that uh, anybody could have because the man uh, scored six minus six points. So he missed a, his qualification by six points of being on the Olympics. So this guy knew what he was talking about, and he taught me a lot. Cool. Boos, were you going to say something real quick? Um, I totally spaced okay. out. On so here, here's an story. interesting scenario. This might be something that a lot of new owners, new gun owners are in. This is a comment coming from Drado out there. New shooter here. I live in a band state. It's very cost prohibitive to go to the range or join a club. Most clubs don't do over 50 yards and cost hundreds and have stringent joining requirements. So I'm going to ask for advice from the panel here in a second. Drado, I would suggest you depending on where you live, depending on if you can afford this or not, maybe a couple times a year, just do a little weekend road trip, a little vacay, go out of state. If you can, if that's going to work with you to travel with your firearm, uh, maybe you've got a, a less restrictive state nearby that you could just go an hour, go to the range. You know, if they've got a, you know, ranges, you can go pay just a one day fee to go shoot at like 20 bucks or something. Take all your stuff with you. Go have a good day of shooting. I mean, just saying if you can't afford or it's too cost prohibitive, too restrictive, just leave that environment and go somewhere where you can shoot like me i could go if i had to i could go south into kansas it wouldn't take me very long i could go over to iowa i might be able to find a more open range that's open to the public that anybody can go to maybe you just got to do a little training session so i mean what do you guys say to something like that restrictive state super expensive very limited in the distance you want to shoot i guess it really depends on what you want to shoot what do you guys think on something like that uh, yeah. depends, move depends out of that the state to a free move state. out of that state <laughs> Yeah. Depends on the state, but there might still be public land where you can go, or what, what do they call it? Is it DNR land or whatever it is? DNR land might have some outdoor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Squid, what about you? Move. Move. <laughs> Get out of there. All right. Go to Nebraska. What about you? It's nice. Come to Nebraska. Yeah. It's um, kind of cheap to move here. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 I, like. what, what I would do is I would get really heavy into dry fire to get your skills up ah. and then go and then do this weekend, maybe once a month, every other month to go out and really have specific skills that will confirm your, what you're doing in dry firing is correct. And I know you guys might not like it, but I did have, I've got the Mantis system for training. I'm not sponsored by them, but I got a Mantis system, which is kind of fun. There's some little games you can play with it. It kind of just keeps you comfortable with your firearm and <laughs> trigger place, you know, stuff like that. Go ahead, Defense Dad. Oh, sorry. I chuckled because mm-hmm. I was just typing the same thing in the chat. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, try, try like a, yeah, dry fire is a big one. Maybe, you know, watch some videos on, on technique and shooting and get some snap caps and practice with your, practice with your firearm. You can at least stay up to date on the manual of arms sport and being comfortable with it, knowing that trigger break. And so that, and like I said, okay, if, if moving's not an option, I would just say go to a range where you can shoot. If you got to do a little road trip tied in with a weekend vacation or something, you know, somebody's usually, let's sure in the middle of a place, you got to go six hours to get anywhere, but go ahead. Well, I, I don't know about and you. By, but, sorry, by, sorry, by dry firing. I'm not just talking about pointing at the wall and doing, there are dry fire books for, um, I know Ben Stoker drills Park and has a, a really good one. It's it's drills that is towards the sports shooter, but there it's stuff that anyone could do. They'll that will increase skill for anyone because the the Ben Stoker that I was talking to talking about he doesn't just do um, sports shooting. Like he'll teach military. He'll teach he uh, he'll go out and teach. Um, special forces he's been all over europe teaching like like high-end military people pistol skills as well as how it could be adapted to rifle okay but it's it's not yeah not just 
um, this or that. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, defense that you want to say anything? I, yeah. I was just gonna say, yeah. I'm glad he brought up drive fire. I know we're talking about ranges today, but if you can't get it to a range on a regular basis, yeah, you can practice. I mean, you can with the with uh, something like the mantis, you can set up a target. You can pl- practice how to clear your your house. You can practice holster draw where you can't do it at some ranges. There's a lot of advantages, but then then when you can get to the range, make the optimize that money and just make sure, like like we said, make sure what you're practicing at home comes into real life. Okay. So I've got a question for everybody with regard to outdoor ranges. Mm -hmm. Do you guys tend to want to leave or move away or keep distant from somebody shooting black powder? No. No. Doesn't matter to me. No. It wasn't well, the guy that was shooting black powder next to me, it was no worse than say like a 308 going off or something. I mean, it just I had a guy on my left that had a black powder and a guy on my right that had a seven millimeter Remington Magnum that he was sighting in. And I mean that the black powder it was obviously less to me it had less less uncomfortable. Now I'm fine with it, but I'm also doubling up on ear pro, wearing good quality ear pro, and I I kind of put myself through it because it helps me get conditioned to gunfire going off. I'm not saying I just saying like if something would happen and there'd be gunfire, I wouldn't. Gunfire doesn't really seem to make me jump at all. I've gotten used to it, so if I hear it, you know I know it's gunfire. It's like it's I'm like oh my god, there's a gun going off, and I'll run away. I mean it's really kind of condition me to it the noise the concussion just the conditioning to it i don't know i guess it's just part of being around it so if there were gunfire i'd like to think of a situation and i could think through it not panic so I've, well I've with had... our overhang it's not overly noisy it's just yeah. overhang. Yeah. There's, there's not wooden baffles on the side either it's open i was yeah. talking about the smoke and the fact oh. that people think these things are going to go off like a stick of tnt oh no, that doesn't bother me. I like the smell of it. <laughs> so, I, thought it was honestly, cool. I, I thought it was cool if somebody was out there with their black powder because you don't see it that often, you know? I'd rather yeah. be next to someone shooting black powder than the, all the smoke from someone in, like, rapid fire in a twenty two like, AR or something. That That's going to do more smoke because the black powder is only going off in the, every so often. <laughs> I've yeah. been shooting, yeah, and that's yeah. just it. It does make a lot of smoke, and by the time you're on that sixth round, it's, it's pretty smoky, but then you're going to wait you know, five to 10 minutes to before you reload again. Oh yeah. These guys um, that brought their black powder out there, he was, these two dudes were out there for like an hour. I think they shot it four or five times. Like they were trying to decide it in. I mean, you it can, was, yeah, you, yeah. you can do things to speed up the process. You can bring extra yeah. cylinders. You can use paper cartridges. Oh, yeah. I've Absolutely. even gotten to the point where I can reload, um, you know, five or six chambers uh, in, in a fairly decent amount of time just with practice. But the, the thing is, when I've been out at the open range shooting my percussion revolvers, I've had people next to me giving me dirty looks or having their eyes bulge out of their head or whatever because they see me putting the powder in, then they see me putting the primer on, and they're you know, and you'll see them pack up their stuff. That's and just move the local over. culture here in Nebraska. No, no, that no. kind of shit happens all the yeah. time. You're fine, man. They don't want to be next to me when I shoot like three rounds of the 22 conversion. My AR with all that smoke, then. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've had them. I've I've gotten dirty looks over the smoke, I, but I've gotten more dirty looks while I'm loading it. And I think people don't understand how they work. I mean, they literally, yeah, it's not. just like a cartridge. It doesn't just go off sitting there by itself. Right. And, like, are you supposed to pour powder down your barrel? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, they, 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 they probably don't realize that the mechanics of a black powder and the mechanics of what they're shooting are the exact same. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to just say something here real quick. So we were talking about like looking at which facility to go to and seeing what they have to offer. So gun toting pass brings a really good point up. So if you want to join a range and get the most out of it, depending on your prepping scenario or why you're learning to shoot or why you bought your gun, gun toting pass says are rapid fire skills necessary. It seems like most gunfights are conducted using rapid fire. Um, he says, and I, I subscribe to donut operator. So I'm kind of an expert on the topic. So I would say if you, you know, if you really want to try to get the most out of your AR-15 and you, you you have no combat training or you just want to go through the process of the rigors of something that's more than just shooting on paper, take a tactical rifle course, take a carbine course, like do some research and see who offers good classes. I'd love to take something with like Ronan. I mean, his classes, I love watching his channel, uh, the Ronan, um, uh, Tran, I think is what his name is. And he's he's got a great... You know, his courses look pretty intense, man. I mean, this stuff is like, you know, he's training military and LEO. Um, I think that it probably wouldn't hurt you. Any of the pistol classes I've ever taken, like defensive handgun classes, they've helped me tremendously. Uh, you know, the different position shooting and, and shooting at targets from different stuff. Instead of just shooting at a bullseye, 
What do you guys think, man? Should you ever do anything like that? I, I think it'd be fun, personally. You can, you can even yeah. get that for free at the range. Now, there's lots of people at the range who are experts, right? Air quotes around that, and they'll give you bad advice. And I just typically tend to let them talk and then move move on, right? I, I just go ahead and say well, I'm thinking things. like rapid. I'm talking about hiding behind barriers. You know, these guys that are shooting over the, the cars and all the videos and stuff. Oh, I was hiding behind the little cutouts and... No, I'm saying like actual like tactical training so, to really have to do some oh, real live fire. So, so the, stuff, yeah. the barriers that is good, just to it gets you out of a, out of your comfort zone, and teaches you. Okay, there's a sight over bore thing. It, it's just different ways of teaching. You could do all that yourself. You don't need it, but if you are to a point where you're extremely bored with the type of shooting you are doing you think that you know like you can't step outside of the box and look at your shooting in, in a different way go to a course spend the money they will teach you different ways of shooting or how to shoot different no oh, yeah that's a good idea if you're getting into a different uh, style of shooting go to warm go to a match check it out talk to people there at that match, see what's going on and you know, you can take bits and pieces of information to give you. you know, whether you use it or not, that's up to you. You know, you, every individual has his own individual style of shooting anyway. But, yeah. you know, more information you get on a particular uh, genre uh, of uh, shooting, you know, different types of shooting, then grab the, grab the knowledge while you can, definitely. Yeah, check like the online calendar for the range. A lot of ranges have an online calendar. Look at the classes that they're offering. If they offer those kinds of things and that appeals to you, that might be reason to join. Maybe you want the tactical yeah. training or maybe it has something to do with your career or maybe you just want to get out and just have some fun. I mean, I love doing the three gun thing. That was that was a blast. And I've taken a few defensive handgun courses and those were a lot of fun. Um, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to 7.5 FK out there. I want you guys to go subscribe to 7.5 FK's channel. He reached out to me and said, hey, man, check out my channel. I got a lot of cool content. I went over there and subbed. Uh, some really neat firearms on that channel. So make sure you guys get over there and sub to that channel. It's going to get a little plug out there. I try to help out little channels that are, you know, trying to get going. And 7.5 FK, definitely, definitely one worth looking into. Um, Gun Toting Pacifist makes a really good point. So if you're taking a buddy with you or you're taking somebody to the range for the first time, you want to get them interested in it. He says, I try not to correct new shooters beyond safety on their first time out. I want it to be fun for them. So, like, if they... You know, want to just enjoy the gun, you know, instead of saying, well, hold your breath. Nope. Exhale. Now pull the trigger. Now reload. Now, instead of regulating them through, just let them enjoy the shooting. You know, obviously, yes, yeah. they need to understand the basics of gun safety, but get them interested. It's amazing how many people you will convert if you have a fun range day with somebody that's never shot before. I've done that with several family members. And guess what? They're all gun owners now. My best friend and wife, I never thought they'd be gun owners. And now they both have G17s and they <laughs> belong to a range, you know? So yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool what you, you know, what, what can happen to people if you give an opportunity to get out there and, and just do some shooting. So if you know, like, and here's the other thing too, if you've got a gun guy at your job or a buddy who's a gun person, right? Or a crazy gun nut, right? And you're interested in joining a range or you're interested in getting your first fire, maybe talk to that person. And we're not saying they're going to give you the best advice. I might give you awful advice, right? But you know, go to a range, run a handgun, you know, run some rounds through it, get some advice on maybe what first pistol to go for. And again, this is a debate for a whole nother time, like how to pick your first gun. We've had these talks before, but, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people come up to me. I had friends approach me when stuff was going on with all the you know riots and stuff. I had I had two or three friends that reached out to me from high school. They said, hey, you know, I I know you've got a YouTube channel. I know you shoot a lot. Can can we talk guns sometime? I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, you know, go with me to the range. I've got a couple of friends I've taken out that became gun owners. Uh, after doing that. So, um, okay. So 7.5 FK gave me a super chat. That was not planned. 7.5. I'm just doing it because you got great content and I want people to know. So anyway, $10 super chat. Thank you. 7.5 FK. You guys are generous today. Super chats are very rare in the mornings. So, and, and I don't really care. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, he says Travis P 11 rocks. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to go into the ammo fund. There we go. It's going to go into the ammo fund um but yeah if you know somebody that's that's a gun person uh you know ask them and say hey you know can i can i go through the range sometime or you know our family's thinking about buying our first gun can we talk about it and like yeah absolutely you might be surprised and then some people might be uncomfortable about it it depends on the personality of the person i'm i consider myself a very outgoing person i, I like to communicate and work with people so 
you know, and, and I have, I'll have people that will, that will also contact me that email me for my channel and they say, Hey, you know, I'm, we just bought our first gun. Can you give me any advice or the cleaning videos that I make? You know, people say, Hey, you know, this is my first gun. Thank you. I appreciate the instruction. It's like people like the information when they can get it. So just be a good person about it. I think that you'll, uh, you'll bring some new, new, some new fold into the flock essentially. So, yeah. So when you're at the range, there, there's the people that are the experts that know everything and mm -hmm. they just, they, it's like the guy hanging around the gun store that never buys a gun, but always wants to talk. Right. Oh yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. But there are yeah. people at the range that are absolutely clueless. It was the last time I went to the range or the second last time I went to the range, there was a guy there with his daughters and he had an AR 15 and he had it in the cardboard box. You could tell he just bought this thing and he yeah. had no idea what he was doing. He oh, didn't. Yeah. He had no clue. He needs to go subscribe to Travis P11. And and, <laughs> and his daughters didn't want to shoot. And he got the older oh daughter to God. shoot. And she was just, I saw how she was holding it and everything else. Ooh. And she's, she's jerking the rifle. She's shooting on my target. It's a mess, right? And she apologized. And he apologized. And, I, and I'm like, um, would you mind if I gave you a couple pointers? Would, would, would you be at all open to that? And they're like, yeah, sure. What do you got? So I showed her how to hold it like I was taught in the military. And I said, this is uncomfortable, but you'll get used to it. I said, now try it. And she's just banging away on her target. And she turns around and smiles. And I go, there's, so you know, she, and he she's goes, like, she's like this before, oh, you know, like, like, yeah, chicken yeah. Winged, just kind of like, kind of like off, like, you know, whatever. You and know? the dad like, goes, oh, and the dad goes, where did you learn that? And I said, in the Marine Corps. The Marines. <laughs> yeah. And he, Pretty hard suddenly, to argue with that. Then yeah. suddenly he's, he's a little bit more comfortable. And usually that one shuts down any of the guys that are running around going, yeah, I know everything. Have you ever been a cop? You ever been in security? You ever done law enforcement? You a mercenary? You, you know, do you, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> but I played Call of Duty. Right. And so, so oh, uh, God. Uncle, his, his, younger. his younger daughter, his younger daughter was standoffish. She, she was just afraid of that AR 15. She was afraid of it. And I said, no, here you try. And she's like, no, no. And dad, dad was trying to get her to do it first. And, and, the, and your younger daughter wouldn't. So he gave it to the older daughter who was having trouble with it. And I said, now your older sister did this. You can do this too. Don't be afraid of it. And I got her to hold it. And I said, you feel how light that is. I said, now when it goes off, there's going to be a flash and some noise, but this is not that bad. Try it. Just go ahead and don't even worry about hitting the target. Just pull the trigger and let it let it go. And 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 she she does it and then she looks at me and I go, it's just not that bad. She goes, No, it's not that bad. I said, Now, you know, try to hold it like this. And, and then she's shooting, and now she's got a smile on her face. And the dad's like, Thanks and stuff. Don't and, forget to breathe. Right. Exhale. And I, and I, you know, I, I didn't want to get too detailed in there. I yeah. did tell him, I go, dude, it needs a sling. But um, I, I just I didn't want to be that guy that was going in there. But I could see that he was losing his kids right there. And they were literally right next to me and shooting on my target. And they started getting I, their phone out. They're yeah, like, hey, so are we done yet? You know? <laughs> in, in under 10 minutes, I, I had all three of them shooting better. And I had all three of them shooting together. And then I just went back to my thing. And I'm not saying that you should go out of your way or anything else like that. Some people get rude. Some people get offended. Some people, you know, I love the guy who tells me I'm holding my handgun wrong. You know, oh, you're holding it. You're holding it wrong. Uh, you know, and it's like, really? I can hit the target with it. And uh, you can't even hit the target with your handgun. Or when they say, you know, when I, because when I do my two-handed hold, it's an old, old style hold. And a lot of people say that's wrong. No, it isn't. Oh, it's yeah. That's old. not tactical. You're right. not doing the. Uh, forward isosceles or yeah I, and i don't yeah i weaver and and oh, the and isosceles and, all that. And, and i'm like look man i'm i'm a low too. speed high drag shut up and just stay in your bay if you can hit the target <laughs> and you're not being unsafe during practice or training i don't mm -hmm. care right mm -hmm. so what's funny is i'll have the i'll have them be like oh man yeah you're holding it wrong two-handed so i'll just hold it one-handed and put them in the bullseye and go is that better you know exactly yeah uh a couple quick quick real quick couple comments here 7.5 fk said i learned a bit in the marine corps too not much from cod though yeah video games only teach you so much about real world shooting that little vibration you feel through the controller that's nothing like real life uh and then also 7.5 fk said i'm going to be doing a gun giveaway soon it's a springfield springfield rpd so go sub over to 7.5 fk man so you don't miss out on that you know Who 7. Want a free gun? 7.5 if you've got a range story or something like that where uh, somebody, uh, you know, was having some trouble and maybe you helped them out. And then they did ask you, where did you learn that? You know, uh, if you told them, you know, you're a veteran or whatnot, were they surprised or were they, were they a little bit more comfortable 
after you. You know what I mean? Because that's what I've noticed is I don't use it to break the ice. I don't go walking in there with the hat and the shirt and, you know, run it. But every now and then, I because I, I don't like to flaunt it. But when, when I do say it, it usually makes people a little bit more comfortable. You know, and just because you serve doesn't mean that you're a freaking expert either. It doesn't. But I will say that somebody with experience and good training is a lot more likely to, to, to teach do somebody the basic fundamentals of how to properly hold and shoot a rifle. Yeah. That little bit of information is is priceless. I mean, that first time they'll know how to do that. The next time they go, they'll remember that. I still remember things from some of the courses I took for pistols, and it it's helped me tremendously. You know. Yeah, as opposed to once again, I played Call of Duty once, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I leveled up, baby. Foose, what about you, man? Anything you want to say on that? Giving advice, helping people out, giving them some tips for shooting and stuff. Um, well, I I don't go up and give uh, give tips unless one of two things: they ask, or they are so like in Squibb's case where they are. You could read their body language; they're wanting to ask, but yeah. are un yeah. but not asking. Exactly. Um, but that takes, you know, that takes someone to be observant. And a lot, and a lot of us, when we, we go to shoot, especially at public ranges, we don't go, we don't um, go there to, you know, be mindful of other people. Mindful meaning like reading body language, stuff like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Tommy gun out there says as a vet, it usually breaks the ice. So, so Tommy gun's got a pretty good point there. Um, defense that says I've never played call of duty. Not even once defense said, get over here. Come over here. We'll put you on some COD. Let's play some halo. They play some destiny too. You're going to be all set, man. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Mario Mosin. I played call of duty for real life. It was called Iraq. Yeah. Thank you Mario, <laughs> yeah. for serving. That's uh that's where you, the, you know, yeah, there's no respawning. In uh, in real life combat, yeah. hey Mario, did you run <laughs> around after you got shot and just wrap some bandages around your arm and you're better? <laughs> Stab yourself with the morphine and continue shooting straight. You know, yeah, there you go. Did you call in an airstrike, Mario? Actually, he probably did. I shouldn't say that. So there, there well, was absolutely, this, this was normal. It's there like, was this comedian who uh, had an old shtick about the Rambo movies. He goes. Rambo's in Vietnam in the, in the movie and stuff. He goes, I was in Vietnam. And he goes, Rambo's running through the rice paddies and, and the mortars are going off around him and he just runs around the explosive uh, explosions and stuff. And he smacks himself in the forehead. He goes, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, be, oh, yeah, I should have just ran around him when they were blowing up. There's no concussion. There's no shrapnel. No, that's just all, that's all fake. So uh, Storm and Norman's out there. Good morning, Storm and Norman. Good to see you, man. Oh man, yeah. So so pretty good stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I think we've we're giving some good advice here. So again, like I said, you know, just test the waters, hit the different ranges. If they'll give you like a public shooting, if you can get a pass to actually go shoot for once, try it, see how it feels. Ask questions if you have them, pay attention to their rules. If they have them, you know, you'll you'll find what range suits you best. And like I said, the one that I belong to, it's not always convenient to have to go film outside, but I like that range because, again, I can shoot, you know, I've got good hours. The people out there when I'm shooting, I've, I've personally never seen any unsafe experiences. I know Defense Dad's seen a couple times where people weren't paying attention, maybe flag him and stuff. But, um, you know, for the most part, like, yeah, I, I, I just kind of joined the range that I felt most comfortable with. Now, before, when I lived out Lexington, Nebraska, in central Nebraska, that range was, there was a public range you could shoot at, which was a dirt hill right by Interstate 80 that you could shoot at. And then, yeah, it's like like 100 yards off the interstate. There's a range right there. Like the firing line is 50 feet from the side of Interstate 80. Um, his grandfather did. But then the other range I actually belonged to, it took me about 15 minutes to get out there, 20 from my house. And I'd like it because it wasn't very, it wasn't hardly ever very busy. Uh, everybody that was out there was wonderful that I ever worked with. And, you know, I just felt most comfortable there. Even though it was outdoors, there was no shade. You watch my videos, it was you know, windy, dusty, hot, uncomfortable. But I had fun. I had fun shooting there. And that's... That's probably the most important thing. So you'll find what, what's most comfortable for you. And again, certain people, situations, all the ranges around you might be 50 bucks an hour. They might have to, it's who you know that will get you in, or you've got to pay so much per month, or you've got to volunteer your time. Just again, check them all out and decide on which one is best, you know, which one feels best. And as for like, you know, membership fees, like sometimes you have to join if you don't want to pay the 20 bucks to shoot every day. You know, I, I pay, like I said, I pay 160 a year to have access to all the Standard firearms bays, and then no, if I want to do skeet shooting, I got to pay an extra 160. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for, and that's just the thing is, if you can get into something for 
Oh yeah, let's go back to the uh, real quick. I want to go back to the survey now that we've we've got this. It's been a couple almost two hours now. Um, how much do you spend on range dues or fees every year? Twenty one percent of you. I said zero. I shoot on my own private property, and that could be like family's property that you're allowed to use. I've got a family member that's got an acreage that I can shoot on for free if I don't mind driving thirty minutes to get there. Uh, twenty six percent of you said one dollar to one hundred dollars. Thirty percent of you said one hundred one to two hundred, and twenty three percent of you said two hundred or more. So I just wanted to like show you it, it's a good spread i mean roughly one in four is well almost everybody's paying except for just that 121 so yeah i mean that's just the thing is well how much should i pay for range fees well it depends on how much they ask i mean you don't you don't always have a choice so so that's why new york outcast said i didn't see the survey um i've just taken it down now but it was up the entire time so who knows if it was there or wasn't there so yeah so yeah i mean it all depends on range like, like me i have two hundred dollars and I have full access to the range. If I want to go to skeet, I can. If I want to use their throwers and stuff like that, I have to take an additional class orientation for yeah. that for that hardware. But other than and that, I've been I shot a Foose's range last summer and it was nice. It was very well kept. It was very the people out there were really cool. Um, they got a lot of neat little bays and stuff you can shoot in a lot of different areas to shoot at. That was a really nice range. But um, but it's also yeah. crap. Like I don't like the range. Because like like it's a very nice range, yeah. But the culture of it and what they're trying to transform, or they're trying to put bay, you know that uh, did we shoot? No, we didn't shoot the 50, 50 yard uh, pistol bay. We just shot rifles. Um, we did shoot it in a pistol bay, but I don't know if it was fifty. What, what, we shot in one that was completely enclosed. It was twenty five yards or something. Oh, with plate racks. Yeah, we shot. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 so, yeah. So yeah. that that scaffolding on the top. They're yeah. trying to do that on the 50 yard bay right next to it. Mm. That's what the you know, almost 400,000. Well, that was last year's prices. So now with it'll probably oh, almost 500,000 yeah. with, um, yeah, easy. You might as well rack it up 20, 25% just because and, of inflation. And, and the thing yeah. is that they're trying to do this and they're like, yeah, we have 600,000 in the bank, but it's like, that's, that's not a whole bunch of comfort room. You're going to use more than 75% or 80% of, your funds on this one thing that's not cool what if what a property taxes double next year <laughs> then everybody well, i mean that, that, are gonna go up you know yeah i mean they're out in the middle of they're doesn't, they're doesn't you never know if there's something's gonna be gonna be reevaluated i mean you know so i'm just saying that just little things like you're right though you should have maybe operating expenses for like one year in in the bank mm -hmm. just in case you hit a bad situation or something happens or you've got right. massive maintenance you have to do or tornado comes through and but, levels but the that, range you know? but that's on the range that's on on individual or you yeah um, yeah yeah tommy gun says have anybody in the chat seen that range that shoots over a major highway prone is the only position um oh, that's I had over people, in switzerland in germany oh okay and my range like the one that i the one little dirt hill i used to shoot at uh I'd have people that would freak out in my videos like, dude, there's cars like right behind you. And it's like, yeah, this one's been grand grandfathered in since the 50s. You literally, the shooting bench you shoot at, you can shoot anywhere, any distance you want. But you turn around, 15 yards away from you is the side lane for the Interstate 80 in central Nebraska. Like you, there's trucks going right behind you the whole time. You can see it in my videos. I haven't shot at that range. I mean, I shot, I used to shoot it there a lot, but. Uh, yeah, no, that's, I mean, you're not shooting across the highway, but people have been freaked out. Like, I thought you had to be 200 yards away or 100 yards away from the road. Not at that range because it's it's been there for a long time. So, um, Gun Tony Paspa says, 150 for the year at my 86-acre club. That includes fishing and hunting. We have access to a budding utility property and have a 1,000-acre public land behind our berms where we can hunt as well. That's awesome. That right there is absolutely fantastic. Gun Tony Paspas, right, so. if you don't mind me asking, what state are you in and when can I go? <laughs> <laughs> um, New York Outcast says Mel Club was 125 a year with 24-7 access. Yeah, we had the outdoor range I belonged to out in Lexington. That one had night shooting. You could go out there and turn the lights on if you wanted to. Because there's people that you know work during the day and they'd get off in the evening and they'd want to shoot. You can go out there and actually turn the utility lights on out there and light up the hole. Uh, pistol range. So squid that the pistol range that you and I shot on, that's lit. You can actually light that up. And then also they had lights on the um the zero, what was it? The zero to 100 yard carbine range next to it. That's also lit up. Nice. So yeah, yeah. So that was all there too. You could we just didn't because you and I shot during the day. But uh it's pretty cool. So yeah. Uh NH New Hampshire, I'm guessing. Is that right? Yep. If I know my 
my abbreviations. Yeah. Okay, NH. Yeah, I'm sure. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, let's go ahead and start to wrap it up. It's been almost two hours. And again, we've given, again, we've, we've shared our personal experiences, our likes, our dislikes, what we've gone through, you might go through. So we're kind of priming you for what could potentially happen when you go to some of these ranges for the first time. Um, you know, obviously you're going to, you're going to do what works best for your budget. Um, there's a lot of perks that come along with the fancier gun clubs. Uh, a lot of places still require you to pay range fees, even though you're a member, it's almost like golfing. You still pay green fees, even though you're still a club member, right? It's the same kind of idea. Well, let's just kind of wrap it up real quick. So, Squib, do you want to give any little bits of advice for anybody looking for a range or contemplating joining? Anything you want to say here at the end? Make sure you're aware of the rules. Make sure you're aware of all the fees, all the requirements. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, you just go in there informed. If they have range safety officers... Build a rapport with them. Be be polite, even if they're jerks, because they can throw you out. And if you don't like it, unless you're locked into the the uh, you know some sort of contract, uh, you know when 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 you're done with your your dues or whatever, it, don't don't come back. Vote with your wallet and that sort of thing. If your schedule is you know the biggest factor in you getting out to the range, you might have to put up with some things that you don't like. If there are, you know, 10 ranges within 45 minutes of you and none of them have rules that you like or they have fees you don't like or whatever, and then outside of that, you're going to have to drive three hours, uh, you've got to make a decision. Uh, and if you really, really don't like the ranges in your area, contemplate at some point buying your own land, even if it's just land mm -hmm. to shoot on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's something to consider doing. If you can get yourself an acreage and it's out of town and you can do it, that almost would pay for itself, especially if you've got kids to pass it on to or other family members that might enjoy it or maybe get in on it. I've got a buddy who really would like to open up a range. He's talking about moving to Nebraska. He really wants to open up an outdoor range to buy some land. It's like, dude, this would be a huge undertaking, but it's it's possible. You can do it. You just got to go through all the hoops, but uh, or even have something that's just outdoors where you sign a waiver and you shoot out there on your own, but just have a place to go um yeah that would just be awesome so uh defense that out there says we even have porta potties at our range we're bougie yes we are we have two ply toilet paper and our porta potties i can tell you that for a fact <laughs> so yep uh single shot what about you anything you want to say any just final advice for somebody checking out a uh a range just that you know thinking about joining or not sure what they should do oh yeah uh, number one thing that i could say is a one word situation it's called respect when you go into somebody else's range or you're shooting around others, re be respectful for those individuals and what they're giving, giving to you for either a fee or for no fee mm -hmm. for a chance to enjoy what you like to do. Uh, yeah. As far as anything else, uh, check things out, go to a few matches, you know, check out what they have for a schedule, uh, for uh, the range there, you know, if they've got certain types of matches you might be interested in, go check it out. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, rules and regulations, follow them. You know, it's, I've seen so many places, especially gravel pits, they would open them up, let people shoot, and they get down and they would trash the place. Oh, you know, yeah. leave all kinds of t targets and classic all the TVs are sitting out there. People bring their TVs yeah, out there to yeah, see the appliances. You know, it's like take it, it with you when you're done, you know? Yeah, you pack Don't it, leave you your pack fridge it out. out there. You know, just like yeah, the old no Boy doubt. Scouts uh, saying, pack it in, pack it out. Don't leave a mess. And for God's sakes, if somebody's got a gravel pit open, don't win there and shoot up their equipment. That will put a chain across the entrance to that place so fast it'll make your head spin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, like I said, respect. And you've got to keep that in mind when you go to these places. Yeah. Uh, other things than that, uh, check out the Rumble channel on the Daywolf. Uh, I've got a few uh, new videos up there. I haven't done much on the YouTube because of their attitude here lately. So, I don't know. Well, if I've got something that I want to put out that's not firearms the second amendment related i'll probably put it on there take care god bless america moves by truck 
Absolutely, man. Thank you for doing what you do, Single Shot. I appreciate it, man. Keeping this, keeping this, keeping the shelves stocked for us. Keeping the, keeping the cleaner coming into my gun store and the key, <laughs> and the cotton swabs and all that fun stuff. So appreciate it, brother. All right, uh, Boos. Boos is loose. Anything you want to say before we uh, we let you enjoy your weekend? Culture, the culture of the gun of the of the gun range is is the most important. If you have a fud fud culture and you are into modern shooting um those two don't mix that's where i'm at right now um so i yeah um here's a good way to test it to see what the culture club is like show up and brag about the new high point that you just bought and just like it <laughs> says i'm going to shoot this this thing is awesome and then i should that almost would be like a fun like undercover video go to like a high-end gun club and whip out the uh whip out the e cannon <laughs> I just be like, oh man, I love this gun. You guys really gotta try it, man. This is no, no. no. What, what, what's what's better is having my gun's shattered... made in America. Where's your gun made? Turkey, what, what, really? <laughs> what you need to do is have no. a high point and then a shadow two yeah. orange, and say the high point beats the shadow two orange. It's like, dude, this this shadow two is such trash, and put a dental whip out the forty five. Like, dude, this one came with like a Phobus paddle holster. It's freaking awesome. Actually, I shouldn't <laughs> be talking because I do love. I own high points. I mean, I've had them. I've got a carbine. Yeah, I, I bought my dad a 45 as a Father's Day present. He thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, man. I bought one for myself and him. We had a little father son. Uh, you know, we bought a couple identical guns. I bought a couple high point 45s. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not wrong with them, but I'm just saying it'd be funny just to go to high end exclusive club and whip that up and then put the laser on it. Put a put a laser on it and be like all tactical and stuff. It'd be awesome. Yep. Oh man, that'd be hilarious. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So uh, culture is a big part of it. You're gonna know if you feel comfortable there or not, or people like make snide comments or people are rude or people just aren't very friendly when you go there and you're paying to be in that environment, maybe consider finding something else. If you don't have a choice, you might not have a choice. Obviously I'd rather belong to a not so fun gun club rather than no gun club, just to simply have a place to shoot or you can just go mind your own business, ignore the rest and not care. I think that's probably the most important thing or just do what I do. Hit your mid forties and not care anymore. That's pretty much what it comes down to not care if people think or what they say. So, um, yeah, so on that note, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this one up. We've been going for almost two hours talking about joining gun ranges, perks, benefits, pros and cons. We've covered the whole gamut. Uh, a lot of it really comes down to just going to where you think you're going to be most comfortable and testing it out. Um, all right. So we got Mario Mosen out there, Gunpowder Beauty, Mystic Guns is in the house. Uh, New York Outcast is out there the whole time giving us some wonderful commentary. And also don't forget to check out rnldisplays.com, the premier source for your finer uh gun display furniture make sure you check out rnldisplays.com uh let's see let's you know what we haven't had a banner up at all today let's do that let's put the uh the rnl displays uh, address out there for everyone i totally forgot about banners today uh gun toting pacifist is out there ynh is in the house uh let's see gunpowder beauty tactical fud uh Bernabe sanchez is with us today 7.5 fk squib lived out there squib load over here uh, Defense Dad was with us today. Thank you. AWAG, thanks for joining us today, too. Anybody else we might have missed? Tommy Gun joining in from the land up north. Thank you, Tommy Gun. I appreciate it. William Trader's out there also. Uh, let's see. Kevin June, always with us, man. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Having you watch. Keith Tate watching today. Storm and Norman Gunworks, always in the house. I uh, hope I miss anybody. Two Live Moves out there watching today, too. Obviously, uh, M. Gabriel watching, one of the first people to always comment on the videos. It's always fun. I never know what M. Gabriel is going to say. It's always cool to have him join in with us and, and uh, share in the conversation. Rich White's out there. Rich White, good morning. Tony works in the house. Tony had said that he just bought 10 guns recently, and he's expecting uh, a local <laughs> uh, ATF branch to maybe show up at his door at some point now any day. So, so good luck with that one, Tony. We wish you well, buddy. Just uh, just don't let him in. Uh, Drado, thanks for watching. Uh, you said you live in Connecticut. And you can't go anywhere. Connecticut sounds like the most unfun state to live in. It's up there. I got a buddy from Connecticut. The taxes are horrible. The cost of living is insane. And you can't just go shoot wherever you want. That's not the place where I want to live. Is that one of the original uh, colonies, uh, 13 original colonies? I don't know, maybe. Uh, New York Outcast, Gun Metal Guy USA. Keith Gregory's out there watching. Hootie Who is watching today also. Uh, Joey McLavage is out there too. Says he lives out in the Sonoran area where they got plenty of desert. Ranges are dangerous. I feel safer or safer in the desert. Less people, less danger. Except for maybe like rattlesnakes. But uh, anyway, scorpions. I don't know. Those things even out there, I have no clue. Um, otherwise, that's it. That's it. New York Outcast, thanks for watching. So thanks for watching today, guys. And Gunmetal Guy USA, thanks for watching, buddy. Thumbs up. 
join us next week. We should be going at regular time, 8 a.m. Not sure of the topic just yet, but we'll come up with something fun to discuss. We'll definitely be here for you. Um, otherwise, that's it. So I want you guys to have fun. Be safe. Go hit the range. Take somebody out shooting with you. And uh, as you know, we will talk to you soon. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Alicia. Bye, Alicia. Bye, Felicia.